So, anybody? Anybody? Oh, there's a die. Oh, a 19 from Bellinora. Oh, my goodness. Anybody else got one? Going once? Going twice? Uh, all right. Bellinora, the savvy. Uh, do you need special music for this scene? Uh, no. Um, oh, okay. So, just give me a second to compose myself. I'm very scared. It was a long week. Um, so, we meet Bella back where we left her. She had just finished a big research project and uh, was kind of entering her own in the city of Alkenstar. And now we find her as a young professional. She's teaching at the college. She's working as Vashan's assistant and also dirtying him a little bit. Um, and then uh, at night, we see her sneaking off to her own research outpost where she performed her previous experiment and in the late hours like working on something mysterious some secret project until one night you know many after many months of this Bashan shows up there kind of unwittingly uh and like you know it's just one of those things like he showed up for a booty call he came with like fast his takeout to like you know surprise her but then there was an accident like, you know, wind blew files off of a shelf into her experiment. There's a massive explosion destroying the outpost, which she barely survives. And then the, basically at that point, we see like Vashon rush her off to like the infirmary and like them kind of coming to terms that like she needs help with this project, this thing that's become too big for her. And they start working on it together. Okay, okay. That's good. That's a good cutscene. All right. I like it. Um, let's see. Uh, let me give you a fact inspiration for that. And then is anybody interested in recapping what happened last week for a third hero point and a third hero card draw? Which those cards can be traded between your, each other. Um you know but not in a disruptive way so not like middle schoolers or high uh elementary schoolers stabbing each other on the playground for you know <laughs> pokemon cards nothing like that uh let's see oh man bellinora you're going back for the again. sweet all right going once i have no one else going twice. all right yeah go for it all right literally saves lives i uh, know it's, it's yeah. saved me many times already that's a very yeah. valuable boon uh, all right okay we started last session coming out of our chase scene in the Hellside District and preparing to fight the demon pursuing Shoma Lyserius. Uh, within the first round, Stack the Deck triggered a wild surge that uh, affected the flow of time, and this caused the demon to lose its entire first turn, essentially. Uh, and unfortunately, it was not given the chance for a second. We laid into it pretty heavily, and then Vulture got a gun crit, which finished it off. We then continued further down the Donkey Kong platforms to the address we were given for Shoma. Upon entering, we were assaulted by a powerful crossbow trap. Fortunately, in my investigation of the, a side room, I found a lever to deactivate it. Uh, upon further inspection, the crossbow had a magical rune infused to it, so we dismantled it and took it with us. We then entered a small kitchen, uh, and within it, we, it seemed basically like an uninhabited small apartment, but after finding a sec another secret level lever, we opened an yet another secret door. And then uh, from there, we entered into a robot building laboratory where we fought some uh, clockwork uh, mecha mechanical con constructs. And then we found a bunch of useful tools for building them and alchemical sets. Uh, further south we came to Shoma's room where I found his formula book and then we made our way eastward with, through the darkness following a creepy disembodied voice until we entered into what seemed to be an ancient temple that had been turned into an alchemy lab there we encountered Shoma and an alchemical servant who detonated several chemical tanks flooding the floor with caustic liquids uh, as I entered the room, I noticed that Stack and Catrin were looking worse for wear and realized diplomacy would probably be the safest and fastest course of action. So I tried to reason with Shoma, informing him that the government wanted to take him as an asset. And Shoma, seeing the opportunity for gainful employment and, uh, you know, uh, the opportunity to escape the demon that had, was chasing him for a debt, agreed readily. So uh, we de-escalated. We got out of the uh, chemical uh flow and uh made basically from there we escorted him back to the barrel and bullet where we're about to debrief him okay yeah good stuff go ahead take your third hero point card and third hero point draw all right 
uh, before we begin, did anyone have any mechanical questions b based on their their current or their recent level up? No, everyone's I wanted, good. I wanted to clarify. Um, okay. We, just, we touched briefly on uh, the ability boost. So we, what is it called? We're not using legacy flaws, I'd assume. It's just a thing that's in here, but... Correct. Yeah. They, okay. So currently as it is, if you and your group are like cool with it, you could be like, yeah, I'm taking the flaw because I think my character is really, really bad at this. And then the game's like, cool, you get nothing in return except challenge um that's that's how they handle them now there are certain races usually the smalls that um they can have a plus to three stats but then they get a minus to a stat which is usually strength um but in modern day times you can just do the standard you know stat allotments that all pathfinder characters get so yeah that was just like we're in a transitional phase too, where the things on the Nethus archives are not, I think, up to date yet. Yeah, still not updated. Yeah, yeah, and and these these Nethus archives guys, they're like, we're gonna keep both versions, which I think is a terrible decision because it's gonna make googling really hard. <laughs> because like, how do you know if you found the revised version or the not? If you're in a hurry looking for a rule, um, it's kind of a pain. It's kind of a pain right now. Um, fortunately, the Foundry stuff is all up to date, so you can use Quick Insert uh, to look for what you need, and hopefully that will, um, you know, give you the right information at, at your fingertips. So I think if you, uh, yeah, but the flaw, the, yeah, the flaw, the, fl the flaws thing just kind of got left over um, from earlier earlier editions, but yeah. All right, any other questions or mechanical stuff before we begin? Yeah, I guess yeah. I have a little mechanical thing. So okay. um, that one lamp that I broke and took its uh, ever-burning flame from it, mm -hmm. um, this is the current ever, you know, OGL stuff. I would like to give this to Bill Nora, because you can't see. Okay, yeah. I mean, you can just Thank give you. items to each other. This is, this is Foundry. It's good stuff. A thing. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. All right. Um, then I will change the Musax and we will continue the adventure. Uh, let's see. <laughs> How do I apply Faxpiration to my token? Uh, in chat, she, yeah, she put Faxpiration. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be able, while you're mini selected, to right click and do Extempore Effect. Are you able to? If oh, not, I well, put... yeah, I was. Uh... Yeah, I didn't have okay. a character collected. Oh, no sense. worries. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Okay. So, I got to close this other window. Why do I still hear it? Do you guys hear, like, wind blowing? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I had to turn it down. It was... Uh, oh. All right. Let me figure out why that's happening. Uh, the sound seemed to reset for some reason. All my things were like... There, there we go, there we go. Okay. Oh. Anyways, let's listen to music. There we go. All right. I thought that sound was coming from a different window because I had something else that I was working on as part of my prep, and then um, I didn't realize it was happening in here. That would explain why it was doubly loud. Um, okay. So you make your way down river. And then back to the Barrel and Bullets uh, Saloon. And you got Shoma Lysirius, uh in custody. He does not put up much of a fight. Uh, he doesn't really... Um, he just, you know... He, he has his carpet bag uh, overstuffed with things that he packed from his hideout. And... Um, other than that, it's just... Uh, you know, he, he puts on a, a hood and a cloak and tries to kind of disguise himself a little bit in case uh, debtors, uh, debt collectors are looking for him. And he goes back with you uh, to the Bullet and Barrel Saloon. Uh, when you arrive, uh, Phoebe Dunsmith says, uh, Well, 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 is this the mastermind behind all the uh, you-know-what? One of them. 
As if what? he wasn't even the one that figured it out. I don't think we can call him a mastermind, really. I mean, look at him. Uh, he sneers at you and uh, says, uh, I was awfully close. Almost had it. Uh, and Almost then, a mastermind. And then Phoebe says, uh, uh, wait, but someone, we're going to have to talk this out. We are. We have many questions for him. Okay. Um, uh, so Shoma says, uh, hey, fine, I'll fill you in. And as he does, you feel like this sort of transitional thing where you're suddenly vis- uh, witnessing a cutscene. Uh, and uh, let's see. Yeah, you. those of you who have been there before, you recognize the grand lecture hall of the college. Those of you who haven't been there before, it's described to you in such a manner <laughs> that you could picture it. Uh, a vast room adorned with cogs, gears, and intricate steampunk designs. Uh, sunlight filters through large deco uh, windows, illuminating rows of cushioned seats filled with eager attendees. In the center stands a large wooden podium, and behind it, a table holds a sealed container glowing softly. Atop the podium, Vashon Gattleby, a ragged-looking inventor with a tired look but proud stance, adjusts his goggles and begins his presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Today is a day of great promise. Today we, uh, and then you see him sort of look around, and then he, uh, he goes, I unveil the future. Paranite. The room fills with murmurs of excitement. The camera cuts to Mugland, a plump halfling with a large mustache and an even bigger pocket watch. He leans forward, his eyes gleaming. Uh, nearby, the camera shows Shoma Lysirius. He is Bishonen main character handsome. Uh, his eyes alight with intelligence, and you see the sunbeams coming in the window just add to the already luminous glow of his hair and skin. Nearby, women and men all whisper at how handsome and cool he is. So I'm gonna tell the actual story. <laughs> I, I am telling the story. Listen to me. <clears throat> Show my lies ears. An Efridi with green hellfire in his eyes looks both curious and calculating. Lastly, the camera pans to Kosawana, a known priest and inventor of Bry, who sits rigidly, concern evident on his stern face. The camera cuts back to the podium. And Vashon Gattleby continues. This year compound possesses limitless potential. Power, wealth, innovation. It is all within reach. He opens the container, revealing the glowing pyronite inside. It's basically flubber. It pulses as if alive. Muglin whispering to his neighbor. <laughs> Imagine the profits. We could revolutionize industries. No more child labor, am I right? Uh, Shoma Lysirius murmuring to himself in a very cool way, like, you know, the main character of a cool anime does when they, you know, they have inner, inner monologue. It's kind of like that. On with it, Shoma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And with that power, the freedom to do as I please. Because that's how cool he sounds. Uh, Kosawana, hearing the comments, looks increasingly distressed. Uh, his dark eyes uh, are filled with doubt and he begins to whisper fervently to himself this is too dangerous mortals should not wield such power the camera cuts back to Vashon Gattleby and now for our live demonstration Gattleby begins his experiment however quickly something goes awry the pyronite starts pulsing erratically attendees murmur anxiously and Gattleby looks alarmed. Kosawana stands, his white robes flaring back behind him as he calls for Bry's magic. He shouts, Everyone, shield yourselves! But before anyone can react, the Pyronite erupts in a blinding explosion. Flames and smoke engulf the room. However, just as quickly, 
The flames are quelled and the smoke is sucked away, the result of many protective wards in and around the college. As the room clears, attendees are shaken and injured, but alive. The podium is charred and the pyronite container utterly destroyed. Somehow, Vashon Gattleby lies dazed and alive on the ground, his clothes and hair singed black. Muglin, coughing and staggering. <laughs> what just happened? Amidst the chaos, Shoma's handsome eyes gleam with a dark intelligence, seeing an opportunity amidst the devastation. This, this is just the beginning. That's how cool he sounds. Uh, Kosawana, horror-stricken, rushes to Gattleby's side, helping him up. Are you all right, my friend? Vashon, look at what your ambition has wrought. Vashon, shaken, his voice trembling. We didn't, I, I didn't expect, I, it was supposed to be controlled. The, the power of a newborn star right in our mortal hands. Kosawana looks at the aftermath and then back to Gattleby. This is a warning, Vashon. Some things are not meant to be controlled. And then the scene starts to fade out with the silhouette of the college against the rising sun, the promise and perils of innovation clear for all to see. Then you hear air guitar and a J-pop song starts playing and you see uh, cutscenes of um, Shoma Lyserius becoming a GTA crime lord, uh, commanding legions of powder keg punks and building a sweet laboratory while making deals with demons and getting lots of ladies, especially a sexy cactus lady. Anyways, as it starts to kind of show more of the details of that, uh, you hear a fist pound on the table and the, uh, the flashback ends. And that's, oh, exact and, that, and that's exactly how it happened. And that's exactly how it happened. Okay. All right. So Phoebe says, "Why did you? Why do you keep bringing up this Kosawana guy?" And then he gets a smirk on his face, like he's so smart. He knows something that this government lady doesn't know. But he doesn't say anything. Bit it out, Shoma. We didn't save your mm -hmm. life. Uh, we saved your life now, but we can still kill you. Oh, well, that's a bit. Okay. Just give me the word. Walter pulls out of a fight law. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Uh, uh, so, 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 that some of that. It would be weird. You could, you know, how you're like in the know, whereas everyone else, you are total idiots. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Your whole story short, just as you're getting to the juicy. Bit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you should show them all who's really the smart one by mm. spilling the beans on this wizard say no, person. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> Alaman Kosawana is the one who cracked the Pyronite code. I know, because he's the best friend of Vashon Gattleby and the most brilliant inventor to work for the Temple of Bry in the last century. And I remember that scene clearly. I know he was affected, but I don't know why he had just de went and developed it. But I do know that he must have succeeded because that's what all the rumors are saying. And that muggling fella, him and his corrupt cop girlfriend, they're going after him. So, Chasing we should chase another person down based on them maybe having pyrodite, is what you're saying. Chasing I mean, it's kind of become our job. <laughs> Chasing all these supposed researchers is becoming tiresome. Yeah, can we just, you know, gather them all up? Be like, just, just have a, have a pyrodite convention? Be like, and just... yeah. but listen, okay, sounds important. But who is this other person that set up, like, the wards and saved everyone? Same person. 
Same person. So he's like, you sh mortals shouldn't have this power. And then gives mortals that power. Aren't those Takes it for himself, in fact. University? Mm, that does sound very, that that shouldn't surprise me. Yeah, Not churches, you know. Like that. So uh, what's the plan, Phoebe? What do you want us to do? Phoebe looks frustrated. <laughs> she says, uh, this is like trying to get piss out of a pool. <sighs> Bella. Everyone knows you're brilliant. But you yourself can't recreate this without the formula. He looks very Va crestfallen. Vashon claims he forgot it when we uh, encouraged him back at the uh, at the palace. This guy right here never had a chance. And some say that he's brilliant. That makes me think that it's not as bad as some kind of viral outbreak or zombie plague. It's not like anybody could figure this out. But the problem is when they do, did they write it down? Did they write it down in a way others could understand? And who got a hold of them notes? Well... I would say that even written down, it would be a task for most people to recreate. But with someone who has the resources of an entire church behind them, I believe that he could probably do it. I'm going to need you to investigate this Kosawana fella. I'm going to need you to find out his whereabouts and what he has been up to. And if he's been taken by Muglin... You're going to have to figure out where he is and save him, if he's still alive. If he's been taken by Loveless, well, I'll start asking around. I know that you just got back from a job, and that I'm just throwing you right back into the thick of it. But time is of the essence here. Until we know for sure what's going on, we can't afford to slow down. That's why the DM built seven meta days of downtime into your level ups, so that we could maintain the pacing of this exciting crime drama, but still benefit from downtime. Mm. Mm. You know how I was like, no, I'm not taking the recommendation to rest and get rid of drained. We should jump heroically into <laughs> the fray, I guess, Shuma. Would I be able to get the drained? With the drain to my meta days, or is that just like... if you want? Yeah, if you want to, yeah, like essentially, you gain the benefits of seven days okay. pa uh, of rest, and the, they're the benefits. So, if you have like you know, tetanus coming up, uh, you won't have to worry about that until it actually comes up. So, well, then where would we start looking for this? Uh... Uh, I know someone that might be able to help you. I'll go get him. Be back in a few hours. While I'm doing that, why don't you catch your breath, get some sleep, and, uh, I don't know. Try to figure out y your next move. I'll bring back information and a point of contact. And you, you're coming with me. Uh, he adjusts his, uh, his, his clothes, he uh, licks his fingies, and he smooths his eyebrows. He grabs his bag and he says, yes, ma'am. And yeah, it's 34 of that government stipend for like, getting <laughs> people like show me, you know. Oh, you, uh, as you go to leave. As, oh, so as, yeah, as she's leaving, you, you drop the, uh, the question of money. And she stops in her tracks. Um, you you see every muscle in her body freezes up. Uh, it's not a dwarf thing; it's a government thing. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's it's hard to let go of money. Uh, I'm gonna double check. I don't know if there was actually a reward for bringing Shoma in raw. Let me see. Damn, he really is worthless. Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn. Damn, bro. Um, all right another job 
Did she pay you up front for any uh, any of the powder cake punk stuff? Mm, that was after. Yeah, because she said she's going to pay you guys after you figured out who hired the powder cake punks, right? And nobody nobody negotiated for some of the pay up front. Is that correct? Right. Okay. In that case, uh, yes, she reaches into her uh, her bag of holding, and she produces a fat stack of gold, uh, okay. seventy gold pieces each. Oh shit! Mm. Yeah. And then he uh, <clears throat> Shoma looks at the fat stack and he says, "Ain't so worth this after all." And then he looks, you, Bella, he, he looks at you, Bella. He looks to you, Bella, and he says, "Bella, uh, is there any way you could help an old friend out? You know, since we're in cultural studies class together." You owe me at least five silver. Oh, for the snacks looks like I gotta head out. Uh, and then uh, the, they leave. Never contributed to snacks. <laughs> All right, so it's assumed then that now you guys would gain the Pathfinder equivalent of a long rest. And then I will change out some music here. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. So uh, in case Vulture, because I think Vulture, you picked up that crossbow with a striking on it. Well, uh, I think it was stack the deck. He has it in the bag of holding. Oh, what do I have? In, in case you guys needed a tutorial on runes. Yeah. Please. Um, yeah, so you guys found a cool crossbow which has striking on it, which basically means that weapon does two of its damage dice instead of one. Yeah. And transfer that to any other weapon by paying a tenth of the cost of the rune. Striking runes are 65 gold pieces. You can transfer that rune to your weapon for six gold, five silver. I think it takes like a day or something, I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, this thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So put so it has putting both that on your weapon and a potency rune on it. That's the plus one. Oh wow. Yeah. So if you need to, if you still need a plus one rune as well, the potency rune, you can transfer that as well. It's again ten percent of the cost, which is normally thirty-five gold. So three gold, five silver. If you wanted to transfer both, then I guess it would be ten gold total. So yeah, my question was, does someone want? the runes from it i mean we, i guess we did just get paid enough to I mean, buy yeah. a striking rune but not gonna work I mean, for me so i do like this bow i do i'll just buy a rune for myself and you guys can take that one I can also buy what I need. Uh, stack if you want that short bow. It's, it's all yours. Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll hold on to it. Yeah, what's your current weapon stack? Do you use the cards? Uh, I've been using cards, quote unquote, daggers, and then mm. this dueling pistol that I forgot to get rid of. From... Is this the level when the cards come online where you get to actually use them properly? Uh, the cards come online at level five. So. Oh, I did have one. Th this class seems very complicated. The. What do, What do you ma magi ma magus? Uh, magus, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, because magic missile auto hits, it does not count as an attack. So you cannot use magic missile with your magus abilities. Oh. Yeah. I think that's a feat that lets you do it. But... Yeah. What's the feat? have to check. I don't know much yeah. about Magus. Great. I'm telling you, every class is like trying to learn a commander deck. <laughs> like, yeah, what I, what, to... yeah, when I go to sign up for like a game as a player, I'm just looking at the characters I've already made. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, which one of these am I going to pull off the shelf and play? Because I don't got four hours uh, to build a new character. And then several weeks to learn the entire progression of the level. Exactly. Up. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it, it's a it's an investment for sure. It's uh, it's pretty rewarding though. I, yeah, I like it's the, rewarding. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah definitely. Doctor Doctor Robin's been helping me out, but yeah, I know. I I guess I forgot about the Doctor Robin should start a Fiverr service. Uh, he called should. Pathfinder coaching. You know. Um, mm. 
for $5, I'll look at your build and tell you why it's bad. For $25, I will sit down and help you fix your build and explain to you how it works. For $50, I'll coach you through an entire combat uh, with your with your build. I'm just saying. It could be could be good. Oh, I had one question if anyone knew. Mm. Under my focus like my like arcane focus tradition there's something i could roll i could roll arcane for something but i don't know what that means like i don't know what this roll does it's a 20 but oof arcane oh oh that's just your if if remember in D D your your spell attack like that's just like that's just your unrelated to anything spell attack like that's your that's your base value for making an attack roll with a spell. Okay. Yeah, arcane is the type of magic that you use. There's four different flavors of magic. In the newer system, and Josh, you could you could correct me if I'm wrong. In the revised, you use your best value for all the spell casting you do, even if you're some funk ass um, like hybrid that has like three different types of of magic. Um, for me, before Revised, my character was primarily Divine, but then I did the Free Archetype into Arcane, and there was a point, there was, there was a point where I had two different sets of spell values, because I was better at Divine spells than I was at Arcane spells, and I think at a certain point they normalized again. Um, in Revised, I think you just use the best one you have for whatever spells you're doing. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, question. Mm -hmm. I have uh, Lyserius' uh, formula book. Would he have needed to take that back? Uh, I mean, he, he would have he would have liked it. Uh, you could have uh, copies of all the spells as, you know, part that's, of taking uh, them in, for sure. That's yeah. kind of what I was hoping for. Uh, we okay. don't need to cover what's in there right now. I have enough to go on, but maybe, mm -hmm. maybe later we can pick out a few. Mm hmm um yeah i'm actually gonna double check that real quick while you guys are finishing up what you're doing still malign he has an entire section of the book dedicated to his backstory he has a bigger backstory than any character i've ever made in 30 years um <laughs> it's it's crazy um let's see so we're in our down uh time uh, yes, we're we're using your timey wimey seven days of downtime, which you some of you might have already used as part of your level up. Remember, you can spend an entire week of downtime uh, respecking something, but I'm giving everyone a full respec ticket with no it's no like cost. Um, but normally raw, you can respec with time and money most of the things about your character. So if you took a feat at low level and it was so fucking good but then it's falling off at higher levels you can actually be like oh i'm gonna spend my downtime uh getting rid of that and getting one that would be more appropriate for the way my build is now or the way i play my character now um which is kind of cool that raw you're guaranteed the ability to do that whereas say 5e it's 100 percent up to the dm whether or not you can do any kind of respecting of your character so i have burned my respect all right. Yeah, I respect, but it's only in the uh, once I move some stuff around. And I'm still uh, a swashbuckler because I'm not giving up. <laughs> and Scarlet, how how is your uh, character going and your build going? You good? I think I'm good. I'm gonna have okay. questions for future levels, uh -huh. like the free archetype. Yes. At level six, there is nothing I can take with medic. Can ah, I just so take a different take archetype? A, yes, yes. It's awesome. You can actually, once you have at least two um, feats from an archetype tree, you can then switch to a different archetype tree. So, funny story, I actually won't. I'll only have one by level six. And there, really? Or, yeah, so weirdly, alternatively, there uh -huh. is... Medic at level six has, like, a skill feat... Can I take the skill feat in the archetype slot? Yes, if it's if it's offered through the archetype, mm. yes. It like uh Path Builder won't let me. That's why I asked. Oh, you should have 
So you have level two dedication, and at level four, you can either take doctor's visitation or treat condition. Yeah. Yeah. And I took doctor's visitation. Oh, okay. And then to yeah. get a sec a second one. Well, at six, he says you can treat. get holistic kale. Uh, sorry. Holistic yeah, but care. that's that's a that's the skill feat. Yeah, but since and... it's offered through the dedication, it should be letting you take it. So we'll just manually override it. We'll just okay, override that's it. cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah because that. it because holistic care has the archetype tag, so yeah. It, it yeah it it means that that is the one you can take at level six. Yep. Okay, cool. I'll do that then. Mm. And that one's great because you can get rid of stunned and frightened. Um, I think yeah. you do have to spend a skill feat to get those, but in contra, uh, that also means that when you you could spend a skill feat, and then at level six already take a different archetype. Which normally you couldn't. Uh, right, 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 right. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it all it all kind of comes out in the wash. That's good. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Good question. Good question. Mm -mm -mm. Otherwise, I'm good. All right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I have a and... plan. I'm sticking to it. So potency is the one that or runes uh, is like. Oh, uh, here we go. One. Here we go. His book contains. Um, Lyzeria's formula contains the following number of alchemical formulas. Ten first level, six second level, and four oh. third level. Um, the DM can choose, or you can let the players choose. Well, I'm going to let the players choose, but uh, at least half of them have to deal with bombs and or fire. I mean, that's what I was going to do anyway, so... Okay. Uh, uh, so, I mean, so, Larry, I'll send those over to you. Thank you! All right. Also, can I get his backstory? <laughs> um, I don't think it has too many spoilers for the rest of the adventure. I'll have to check, but uh, I'll send it to you um, if if I vet it and it's not too spoilery. So okay, yeah, he might know stuff that you have to discover in this book. So okay, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? Okay, then as you guys uh, finish that up, if anybody wants to earn income. Uh, with their timey wimey uh, stuff, you could just represent it as accessing hidden caches of money that you had from working way back in the day, or maybe you gambled and won the money, um, or you know, like it's 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 a board game in, in certain uh, aspects. You know what I'm saying? You just you just had more money, money because that's what you do with your, yeah with your uh, uh, your downtime. What's the deal on level in uh, earning income? Like if I wanted to use my like, uh, so. What if you want to do lore alchemy? You could work in Alkenstar. You could work uh, three levels higher than your current level or less. There's that many alchemy jobs available. Nice. Okay. All right. Nice. Uh, okay. So. Not bad. Yeah. Um, so fourteen gold, thirty-five silver. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Mm. All right. If anybody, if anybody else needs to do their downtime earn income roll, you could do it now. Otherwise, we will resume the adventure. I'm sure I'll learn, play some games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are we now at the part where we have access oh. to commissary? Uh, yeah, later? yeah. She she will provide for you um, magical equipment of your level or less if it is essential for your build. Um, so any, and then as far as as far as buying stuff goes, um, in Alkastar campaign, you could buy alchemical goods up to three levels higher than your current level. But they price. But they price it, yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Hey, you, all, you all pull your money for one big bomb. Next boss <laughs> fight is a joke. There you go. Done. That's something. Yeah. I I'm gonna go on a limb and assume a thrower's bandolier might be okay. Uh, yeah. One Yep. Quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, if my shield is broken, I cannot yes. attack with my shield boss. Correct. I believe so. Correct. Okay. You would definitely want a reinforced shield, or if I guess they're reinforced runes now. Uh, for your shield, um, they are a. Minor magical item, level four, so you wouldn't be able to buy it yourself, but you could get uh, Phoebe to, you know, use government connections mm -hmm. to get it for you. 
Um, the shield's hardness increases by 3, it gains an additional 44 hit points, and its broken threshold increases by 22. Hmm. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. I will uh, link it in chat so you can take a look at it. It is 75 gold, though. And that much. Which, yeah, which is the money you just earned, essentially. Uh, reinforcing rune... Minor. There we go. It used to be a particular type of shield, and then everyone just used that shield and didn't use any of the other magical shields in the entire game. So they were like, in the revision, they were like, hmm, I kind of want you to use other types of shields. So now you can get cool sh cool magical shields and then throw that rune on there and have the best of both worlds. Yeah. It basically made it so that other than sturdy shield, all the other shields only gave you a bonus when the shield was permanently destroyed. Yeah. That's a questionable choice. Yeah. All right. So uh, Crash, can you clarify one thing for me? I'm pretty okay. sure the, the description of this thrower's bandolier would imply that I can add runes to it, which is like in like the second or third sentence. Yes, yeah. that is the that is the idea. They don't want to yeah. punish. They don't want to punish people that throw weapons or dual wield um, any more than they 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 already do. Right. So <laughs> they want it to feel financially you know equitable to to have that kind of build, right? Um, Rip, my wife, who plays uh, an edge slinger in uh, Curse of Strahd Classic. Um, yeah, like she would love to have a thrower's bandolier I'll, because she's got to, you know, keep track of all these different magical daggers to throw. Okay. Whereas, yeah, whereas this would just be one item and whatever enchantments you give it, the shit that you store in it gets soaked in that enchantment essentially and then you yeah. you throw it yeah it's pretty cool it doesn't That's let you manufacture unlimited magical daggers but it has a short duration where the magic transfers to it it's really cool right it can carry up to 20 daggers so yeah yeah it's awesome yeah that there's the, there. there's a thing that the gunslinger in sunset bought that he's a dual wielding gunslinger he's got the two pistols and yeah. essentially the holsters for his guns uh, he just needs to put runes in that, and then it yep. carries over to the guns themselves. Otherwise, uh, he'd have to buy. Otherwise, he'd have to buy twice as many runes as everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I'm gonna buy a striking rune for it, and that's all oh. of my gold. I have 20 silver now. Hype. <laughs> that's what we call motivation. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe, you got jobs. <laughs> really, <it's laughs> jobs. All right, Phoebe got jobs for you for sure. Let's go. All right, so um, she returns minus a Shoma Lysirius, uh, but with a familiar face. Uh, Vashon, I forgot how to make Pyronite. Wink, wink. Uh, Gattleby uh, has returned to uh, the field. Now a government agent. Uh, he looks over at you, Bellinora, and he gives you one of those uh, one of those winks where, like, they also make a chick-chick sound with the corner of their mouth while the cigarette somehow still doesn't fall out of the mouth on the other side. Um, oh, yeah, that does it for her. She blushes yeah, and kind of, yeah. like, squirms. 90s girls understand. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, he looks at all of you and he says, uh, Here I am, government VIP. Turns out my good friend has got himself into oh. a bad situation. You can pump me for any information you want. I'm an open book. What do you need to know about Kosawana? Well, starters, how much did you tell him about Pyronite? How did he get this far? Ah, uh, you know, <clears throat> I mean, I told him we was working on something and that you had this incredible idea. And, you know, he might have helped me help you. You know what I'm saying? You know, like that's how friends work. So he might have some inkling offhand to begin with to the complexities of the project that we was working on. So when we were working together, you shared that information with another person? I didn't share the, the whole situation, but I said, you know, oh, well, you know, if we had this uh, particular, you know, chemical and it was not maybe taken to this other chemical, what chemical do you think would maybe cause a better reaction? You know, conversations like just normal mm -hmm. work conversations, just professionalism, you know, As that's you what do. Yeah. yeah, exactly. 
But, I mean, he's probably the most brilliant man I've ever met, so I'm sure when he put his mind to it, he was able to recall such conversations, and that would explain his rapid uh, recreation of our very complex formula. And he looks sheepishly over at uh, Phoebe Dunsmith, who has a look that says, you will hang. You will hang in the square. Uh, and then uh, she says, now, before we go any further, I do have some other agents that I can send out into the field. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else that might be privy to these work conversations? And she looks at the two of you very sternly. Bella squirms a little bit. There might be a junkie named Jeremy that I might oh have God. laced his drugs with a fire, the some of the uh, secret ingredient. I was testing it out. Junkie. He's not going to do anything with Everything is justified in the name of science. I just want to point out that we live in a city in the Manor Waste, which was destroyed by uncontrolled use of magic. And then you alchemists are like, okay, but what if we made our chemical things that blow up even harder? That's what I'm saying. Phoebe nods sagely at you, as if to say, morally, you are correct. But then she says... Our alchemy, our technology, that's what's keeping us safe. You got yeah. Lex and you got Geb. They're always looking for a way in. They fear us because they ain't us. Mm, that's right. So, I hope you paid this Jeremy fella. Otherwise, what you did was incredibly unethical. He got paid in a sense. Mm, I, you know, I don't want any more details. I, anyone else, that a professional that might have this information. I look at uh, Vashon. All right. And Vashon uh, looks around and he says, uh, what? I don't have a lot of friends. I know, hard to believe. Uh, and she says, uh, all right, all right. Then I'll have them keep looking into Loveless. <sighs> all right. So the Vashon turns to all of you and says, uh, all right, what else do you want to know about him? Where does he hang out? All right. So Alamon Kosawana, brilliant yet eccentric. Uh, aren't we all? Uh, priest of Bri. I don't really go in for that, but uh, it, it really meant a lot to him. So I was always very respectful. Listened to all the weird doctrines and stuff that he would be spouting sometimes. It was hard sometimes to hang out with him and his work friends because they were, they were a lot, let me tell you. But anyways... Uh, guy rose fast through the ranks. He was one of the high cogs. That's the term for like, you know, uppity ups within their organization. But guy got himself fired. Apparently he and uh, the other uh, high ranking fellas and ladies and whatnot, they uh, got into some kind of disagreements uh, about the religion and uh, ethics and secrets and he uh, he left the church, apparently. Now, he stayed on relatively good terms with most of the people there, but uh, essentially he uh, took a, a leave of absence, as it were. So, likely he was uh, working in one of his secret workshops. That's something we all kind of have to do from time to time, have secret workshops, because, you know, sometimes the work you're doing might not be any kind of side-eyes, Phoebe, Anyways, so uh, if you're looking for information about him, you could start at the Temple of Bri. Uh, we could just go to one of his last known residences, ask around for him. Um, I suppose we could try the college, but uh, I think my first two suggestions are probably your strongest bet. We can agree on one thing, Vashon, and the right of everyone to have a secret there in which they can hoard their well hoard. It's important. Mm. Uh. All right, so he's provided two leads the uh, Temple of Bri, and then. 
Um, Kosawana's last known residence, uh, which is over in Steam Haven. So this is his official residence, not a hidden one. Yeah, so that was the point. <laughs> um, sorry, I should correct that. This is the last known hidden residence ah, okay. that uh, Vashon knows about. Alright, so either yep. cool secret lair raids or knocking heads slash interrogating slash kindly inquiring with some Abaddon worshippers. And I should ask, would any of you have any connection to or contacts within the Temple of Bry? Not to be confused with her sister Bree, the goddess of cheese. A halfling titty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think no. I ran in those, <laughs> in those circles. Ketrin has a friend at the Temple of Saren Ray who might have mm -hmm. a, a a connection within the Temple of Bree, but not a direct I one. Have an enemy at the Temple of Saren Ray, so, you know. Oh, you you referring to <laughs> Sister Sister Agatha? Is that yeah? Uh, okay. At least a different people. Yeah. So who's your who's uh, the, your enemy within the the church? Is is it, like... it, it is it Victor Shield? No, it's not Victor Shield. Uh, let's see. It was actually. Okay. For some reason, I don't think I listed that under enemies. I just listed it as uh, the traumatic occurrences or something. Right. I think we called them Victor Shield. That's the The Hex. Uh, Victor, she, uh, okay. Oh, oh, no, no, no. He's a, he was a supposed priest of Saren Ray. Yeah. Victor uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the Temple of Bry. This is like, uh -huh. this is like, this is like MIT if it was, a, if it was a religious school. So. Yeah, but catch it mentioned Saren Ray. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. All right. So then you. Yeah, you'll have to find a. Well, you don't have to find an inn, but uh, without a direct tie to it, it could be a little bit trickier. It could be a little bit trickier. Okay, so it's up to you. What direction you want to go? You want to throw a pole up? Throw a pole up. Uh, let's see. Hey, stack the deck. Can mm -hmm. I give you a couple things? I I am encumbered and I can only move ten feet. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sure. What is it? So at this point, it's just my you, firearm you cleaning kit. The, the bag of holding. <laughs> I am holding the bag of holding. No, I'm saying uh, Bella. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's been almost 20 sessions. Are you ready to uh, to renege on your um, your I'm not going to be keeping track of the inventory uh, stance? Oh man, it was so much work in Red Hand to do. <laughs> Well, I mean, Stack's, I mean, no, doing, I, Stack's doing the job. He's carrying it around. He is. I mean, He's he might have misappropriated job. some funds yeah. at, at one point, but you know, yeah. that's what that's what happens when you're in that's charge. That's the cost of the job. I'm not saying Barnabas exactly. never did that. Oh yeah, I still remember Brewdog the Goblin from a third edition game I ran. Man, dude was oh. like si siphoning funds so hard. Oh my god. Oh, what's the new name of Bag of Holding? Because uh, it's like bugged out. Uh, what a what a question. Um. Convenient purse? No, no, no. Hold on. There's a there's a guide. There's a guide that tells us what the stuff's called now. Hold on. It's my least favorite part of this transition was yeah, them re renaming everything. Uh, let's see. Remaster changes. Uh, rules and language. Nope, that's literal language. Um, remaster changes. Where's the where's the vocabulary list? Um, class features equipment. Here we go. All right, and bag of holding is now spacious pouch. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually my character Hellebore's arch enemy. So. Huh. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, it's spacious pouch. Okay, thank you. I really, I really, I hate that. Definitely makes one cringe a little. Yeah, like, like they put they put all this stuff into the Creative Commons. Like, 
You, you could have called it Strahd's bag of holding because they put him into the uh, into the common common. Eh, whatever, it's fine. It's a spacious pass now, y'all. <sighs> okay. My backpack into the bag. Oh, I can. I feel like that's cheating. <laughs> that wasn't cheating. No, because my uh, backpack has stuff, and then I put my backpack into the bag, and then. Mm. But it's, I don't know, it feels like it's cheating. I don't know. <laughs> the, trust me, this game wouldn't let you put more in the backpack than could fit in the backpack. So it's it's still going to track the bulk of the backpack against the bulk of the spacious pouch. All I right. Still have a, need... I still have two alchemist toolkits. But uh, oh, that's another day. I can't carry that, that's for sure. Um... So I voted for hideout because I want to try out all these new toys and that sounds more promising going to a secret hideout on going to more, more promising for, for for violence is that what you're yes, trying to say more exactly. promising for violence i got you i got you mm -hmm. i vote for hideout as well all right i'll try to keep uh any role play exploration or lore to a minimum uh, <laughs> so okay uh all right we get one more one more vote at least we got only got three out oh, of five i'm one still more dumping vote. out my inventory all right, fair enough. Uh, so discretion wants to go to the hideout, so here you go. All right. Mm. Hideout it is. Mm -mm -mm. So it's just my daily craftables that are putting me into encumbered, basically. Like, I have nothing in my inventory aside from, like, my armor and my book now. I'm going to get rid of his book. Do you have a backpack? Um, Is that something that should be in my inventory? Uh, that should be under containers at the bottom of your inventory. Backpack. Yeah, that should help no, I, you. I don't have a backpack, I guess. You get one of those because it's basically two feet bulk. Okay. All right. It is up to you. Do you want Vash on Gattleby to accompany you, or do you feel like that's that's too much baggage, too much responsibility to keep track of this guy? Does he have a way to disguise himself? No. <laughs> then no. Well, he then does. He, he, well, he does. He has a he has a big fake mustache. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but that's not going to stop him from shouting out that he's a VIP. Yeah, <laughs> but he has a big he has a big fake mustache. All right, come on. All right. Uh, what? Right. When <laughs> he puts it when he puts it on, he also changes into his purple overalls. So it definitely looks like a totally different guy. All right. Pipe. Off you go. Um. Well, it's all theater of the mind for now. So you head over. Uh, I'll move your thing to Steam Haven. This is just a few blocks down. Do you do you walk or do you have your man Tom Gordon drive you? Uh, well, honestly, the less that people can see us, the better. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh... Oh, by foot? Okay. No, I was saying All right. afford it. <laughs> oh, that's okay. All right. Sure. And then I uh, afford a cab. And then I need to know which of you are magically disguised. Um, if you are <clears throat> magically disguised, go ahead and put a, we'll say, uh, white dot on your sheet. If you are using a mundane disguise, um, you don't need to put a white dot. Go magic. But I would, I would assume that all of you are using either a mundane disguise or a magical disguise. Okay. How do I apply that? Oh, is it this? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Where did you find that? Oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. Stack, okay. I gave you the wrong formula book. Oh. oh, so so you guys are all using magic disguise hype. Oh, you gave right. oh you gave me your formula book. Uh oh. I meant I to give you Lysirius's. Hold on. Uh, okay. Where all right. Is Apparently, Bella, today you are an owl. <laughs> okay. And Stack, today you are a cool guy. Um, damn, really cool guy. Look at, look at this guy. Oh, yeah, cool. That guy fucking cool as hell. Alright. Mm. Uh, Thrashin. Uh, today, according to random token, oh my. 
Um, you are a muscle dwarf. My God. <laughs> but tall somehow. Yeah, right. A very. So I guess that turns you into a Viking. I don't know. Um, that let's see. gives you like a sideways glance, <laughs> <laughs> like a like a little ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a hundred years younger. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, catcher. people have sex too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. That's it's true. Ages. You ever been on a you ever been on a cruise ship? It's rampant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god. But if you're oh, into god. that, go, yeah, catching looking fucking cool. All right, let's see, and let's see what our resident robot turns into today. Uh, all right. Apparently, you are another cyberpunk character. Oh, nice. All right. So, uh, everybody heading out. Underneath, I'll be in dragon form. So, um, let's hope I don't need to eat or drink. Bella, do you need your book back? Too? I do, I do, please. But I still need to come up with, uh, I need to get rid of seven light bulk before I'm unencumbered. Okay. Oh, let me adjust the calendar. We'll assume that a, a day has gone by at least. The and backpack then... did very little. Can you uh, just send me a screenshot of your your inventory then? I will try. Spread this thing out. Oh, wait. Yeah, stack just starts writing spells in the book. It's like, this is oh. how you do it. Stack should also uh, probably heal up and get rid of all your negative status effects. Alright, so you arrive in the neighborhood around 2 in the afternoon. And let's see what you uh, what you find there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you arrive in the area, uh, you see that there is a newspaper kid uh, handing out newspapers. There's always newspaper kids, but um, I felt like this was a good time to point one out because it's plot relevant. Uh, and he says, uh, extra, extra, get your star for the day. Don't let the sun set on your ignorance. Wouldn't the oh. sun setting on ignorance mean that ignorance ends, or would it mean that we're ignorance at a day ending, I suppose? Uh, he looks over at you, he says, Well now, Mr. Dwarf Big Fella, uh, whatever makes you buy a paper, it's a juicy scoop. There was a big old, there was a big old incident right here on this street. Much a for big... a paper. <laughs> Uh, it's a negligible cost because it's a plot I'll paper. I'll give you a negligible right. amount of money for your paper, <laughs> right. kind sir. He hands you the paper, um, and I don't have a handout for it, but it has important information that the adventurer uh, wants you to have. So, <clears throat> um, yesterday, yesterday, on this very street, uh, there was a commotion at one of the old abandoned warehouses and apparently uh a robot cat with wings uh burst uh out of the roof of a warehouse flew over the the rooftops and then flew north by northeast across the city um people on the ground fired guns at it but when the uh, police arrived, they could find no useful information or witnesses. The mystery of the flying cat robot remains unsolved. So, I don't know how Batman my past was, but do I know anything about flying robot cat villains? Uh, yeah, you could give me a recall knowledge. Anybody that has uh, so listened to uh, Discretion read the, the story out loud. Yeah, I'll read it all out dramatically as, as Crash said. She called knowledge. Oh, right. Let me get up my giant cudgels. That... Okay, you also check your horoscope, just, you know, because might as well, right? Uh, it says, uh, the stars align in the constellation of the Iron Dragon, suggesting that today will be uh, one of significant mechanical discoveries. Your natural curiosity might lead you to tinker with a device that could change the way the entire city views energy 
Uh, regarding love, the cogs of love turn slowly but surely. An encounter with a fellow inventor under the glow of gaslit uh, lamps could spark more than just creative ideas. Adventure, beware the steam mist in the lower quarters of the city. A mysterious figure cloaked in cog pattern robes seeks your help for a quest that involves ancient artifacts and hidden workshops. Wealth, your latest invention will catch the eye of a wealthy airship baron. This could be the break you've been waiting for to fund your more ambitious projects, exclamation mark. Guidance. Remember, in a world where magic meets machinery, your greatest tool is your imagination. Harness it, harness it, and you will unlock wonders beyond belief. They just write these so they could apply to anyone's life. <laughs> um, alright. So, yeah, let me check those recall knowledge checks. Uh, let's see. Oh my goodness. Uh, discretion... Not much comes to mind. Uh, Katrin, not much comes to mind. Stack. Wow. Okay. So Stack, um, it, when you when you hear large winged cat, you think Sphinx. That is what comes to mind. Have I met uh, a Sphinx before? Ooh, uh, you could tell me if you've met a Sphinx before. Um. But uh, you would you would recall that uh, a sphinx is a uh, mostly feline uh, with wings creature. Sometimes they have more humanoid parts tacked on here and there. Uh, highly magical um, in nature, so it would be unusual to be here. Uh, you haven't heard of uh, necessarily a a metal or clockwork one, um, which is unusual. But uh, as you are kind of puzzling this out uh let's see bella you recall because you knew olaman like through vashon that um olaman owned a cat and and loved cats it was one of the few things that he had an emotional uh capacity for is that he he had a pet cat uh and he loved cats so warehouse down the street Flying cat, cat Relevant. robot, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's all kind of coming together there. So, all right. Um, as you guys are standing on the corner reading the paper, glancing up and down the street, uh, the the newspaper kid says, uh, uh, "Hey, if you don't ask me, you don't mind me asking, uh, what brings you to this part of town? I I reckon I never seen you before, and I certainly will remember such." Uh, Distinct individuals. Uh, how old are you again? Uh, sir, I'm a nine years old and eight months. Uh, work. Hey, kid, you notice some interesting individuals around here. You probably know people. Uh, you know what? How much money for the uh, for some interesting happenings around here that might not be in this paper? Oh, sir, I mean, uh, for the mere price of two gold, I could tell you who's the biggest know-it-all in the whole street. Is it you? Uh, he he blushes. He says, "Sadly, it is not." Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, he hands over two. Yeah, he flicks him two gold, like a oh, cool damn. guy, like like a oh, like Fonz. Oh, nice, nice. All right, he snatches them out of the air, and tucks them into his uh, his money pouch, and he says, uh, "You see that over there, R Riggs Salvage, the owner, uh, a, a goblin named Wenrick Riggs. He's the most he's the most busybody on the whole street, and he 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 vigilant. He's vigilant. He don't let any of the kids come around and steal his garbage. Nothing happens on this block without him knowing about it." Let's, let's go down. Thank you. you yeah, no problem. All right, he uh, turns it. And he runs away before you change your mind about uh, the two gold. <laughs> oh, he's, he's cool. We might need him later. We might. Uh, so, you want to take a visit to this uh, Winwick Riggs? Yeah, more information can't hurt. He says that she finishes dumping crap into his bag. All right. Um, picture. Picture the most ramshackle, 
and um, just garbage, uh, like, wooden house that is in front of just garbage. Just mounds and piles of garbage. Uh, that is rig salvage. Uh, there is a sign hanging uh, on the door that says, Open, Knock Loud. Yeah, bang, stack bang, bang. bang, bang, bang. Right. knuckle knuckle wraps the. Damn. From inside, you hear, uh, "Hey, yeah, just a minute." Uh, and then, um, answering the door, uh, you see Wenrick Riggs, the most handsome goblin you've ever seen. It's said that uh, male goblins struggle to grow any hair uh, on their head. Is this a toupee? Is it glued on? That's his business. Um, and I roll to see if it's a wig. Oof. All right. Yeah, you can do a perception. Uh, or if you have uh, a recall knowledge related to wigs, uh, you could uh, use that. I do feel like wigs are crafting applicable, but I'll roll uh, Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll accept a crafting recall knowledge. There you go. Okay. In one second. Let's recall knowledge. Here it comes. They move don't don't knowledge. worry, Josh. If they roll critical failure, you have to fight the wig. So there will be there will be violence. Don't worry. Can't roll a critical uh -huh. failure That's on a recall great. knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know less than you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely it's definitely a, a very very expensive uh, hair hair uh, transplant wig operation going on there. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll keep it, that to myself. You Let notice that you notice it's the most well kept part of him and his property. All right. Is that a wedding uh, band or is that for fashion? Oh, I mean, I mean, it's definitely a wedding band for sure. So it's very handsome, right. obviously. Yeah, uh, he uh, he comes out and he wipes his greasy hands all over his shirt, uh, and he takes out uh, a used cigar and he re he relights it with his his pocket lighter and he says, uh, "Hey, what can I do for you? You here for some scrap? We are here for scrap." scraps of information oh yeah i like that that sounds cool all right all right i hear you're the one to who, who knows what there is to know and knows what there isn't to know that okay well let's go but of, i follow you yeah okay yeah yeah, uh, yeah. that's, that's transaction here you sure Money. you're not here for any scrap because i did come into quite a find the other day well, what do you well, get now, I, i'm down a robot now I got we well. Have to know. I have a robot butler. Yeah. I'm sorry, what now? Oh, I found him wandering the streets, lost and confused. He got ran over by a car, so I, uh, I took his, uh, his remains. I brought back here, and I've been patching him up. Oh, He's a little I, chatty for my likes, though. I'm willing to let him go. What, I'd uh, say uh, fifty gold if you're interested. Can we see Ooh. the model? Uh, yeah, sure. Just a sec. Uh, he he goes back inside. Is can we? Quick question: Is this what we use our memory cores on? Or oh yeah, we. These? That could be fun. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, Remember? he comes. He comes back out. Oop, not that one. Hold on. He comes back out. Which which robot do you have, sir? I have. There's so many robots in this adventure. Ah, here we go. Uh uh. uh. All right, there we go. Before I was arrested, I had a robot uh, companion. Yeah, he comes out with a small, uh, adorable robot. It has uh, a metal mustache, and its chin sort of looks like a beard. Uh, it's got bright eyes, and it looks around. Uh, it looks over at you, uh, Bella, but does not see you for who you are. And it looks around, and uh, it just seems kind of sad. And it says... Uh, Hello there. My name is Steward. How is may you? I serve? And I recognize this robot. This is. Oh this yeah, is you, yeah. You're pretty sure this is your stew. Oh, Bella's eyes like well up in tears. Oh, Stu, what happened to you? Ah. Uh, like, uh, he he like runs up he and looks him over. He, he looks around. He says, uh, "I was run over by a car after wandering the streets for many weeks." Looking for my mistress. Oh, you found her. I have not found her. She is not here. Oh, that's right. I'm wearing a disguise. Walter, uh. let's poke you. 
Guys, this is my friend. His name's Stu. Oh, All right, gonna buy him then. I don't have any money. <laughs> so Winrick, uh, Winrick says, uh, yeah. So like I was saying, it ain't, uh, it ain't great. It's still, uh, still pretty beat up. I definitely wouldn't recommend taking it into a fight, but uh, it can sweep the floors and, you know, uh, tidy up really, around the house. We were just in really there doing cooking cheese. lessons. He does make a good grilled cheese. I know. But you said you, you're here for information. Go on in the house, Stuart. Uh, Stuart says, it was a pleasure to meet you. And he heads inside. Wave to him sadly. I mean, what did you spend your money on? We just got 75 <laughs> gold. How did you spend and it that fast? You see her just like strapped <laughs> down with bottles now. <laughs> like, she's like, got like this whole new, uh, uh, what is it called? Bandolier setup. Yeah, yeah, that money didn't last long. We don't now I ain't no, I ain't no busy, I ain't no busybody, but uh, I do keep track of the neighborhood. I'm what you might call neighborhood watch. Mm. Mm. I like I to see. keep my friends close and my enemies closer, and I like to keep my property safe. So, well, uh, what can I do for you then? What kind of information is usually for sale? Like you know, things that are. Some characters, some unsavory characters, been around here. Oh, you talking about that shootout the other day? Mm -hmm. Listen, I already told the newspapers everything that I know, and I told the shield marshals less than that. And he makes a face like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, in any way we can, you know, grease the wheels of information. Oh, oh, you, you want, well, I mean, I told you, I told everything I know to the paper, so oh. if, you read the, if you read the paper, then you know what happened, obviously, but that doesn't feel right, because the paper said that there were no witnesses, nobody knew anything. Yeah, yeah the paper, yeah, he, he squints, yeah, stack squints, and I guess I have to perform some sort of social check on him. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would say that a, let me see, there's actually, this is actually in the adventure, hold on. Uh, no Maybe use that potion that Bella gave you a little while ago. Okay. Um, all right. It sounds like you're taking a diplomatic approach. So I need you to give me a diplomacy. Uh, don't okay. target him. Just roll diplomacy. Okay. Because it's a placeholder. Uh, okay. I can get this potion out. How do I use this? There you use. And then diplomacy... Mm -hmm. Boop. Boop. How did I do? Um, you just made the <coughs> the DC. Um, he says, uh, well, all right. You see that warehouse, caddy corner down the block a bit? Mm hmm. That's where it happened. Big flying cat out the top of the ceiling, flying away. Pew, 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 guns firing, guns blazing. For a small fee, I might remember more about those guns. The yeah, stack takes out three gold. How yeah. small of a fee? He, he snatches the three gold. He says, them guns was golden. Oh. It, gives you an, it gives you a knowing look like you should know what that means. The golden gunners. Okay. Right. Uh, he says, uh, also, there was a short guy with him. A little fatso with a mustache. If That's... I didn't know any better, I'd assume it was Ambrose Muglin. Wait, I wouldn't describe Muglin as fat, would I? I mean, he, I mean I'm thinking to myself, like, I, like <laughs> I've seen the art of of Muglin, and it's not exactly fat. No, he, but... he's pretty he's pretty fit for a halfling, but this guy might just be mean spiritual. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Or or it was a, it was a or or it was a body double or it was a body double. So, you know, like a fat halfling who's down on his luck, needs some money, he's just shouting at the top of his lungs, "I'm Ambrose, uh, bitch." <laughs> yeah. Uh, he says, "Now nah, you know who lived in that there warehouse, because I sure do." Uh, it, who? It was a priest of Bry, one of them Mwangi fellas. Not that there's anything wrong with that. 
but the guy was a wacko keeping all kinds of late hours constant explosions and then the other day the other day there was an explosion so loud it knocked my teapot collection off the shelf and it broke some of them i'm talking a boom so big it shook the whole block there has to be some kind of city ordinance about that you know what i'm saying so being a good citizen i reported it to the police and that was before the shootout yeah i'm starting to wonder that's why i got suspicious about telling the cops nothing because after that then golden guns came around asking questions then there was that shootout and then the t out the at the top and then the flying away what I think happened was whatever he was up to was dirty. And whatever cops found out about it was dirty too. What no, it's a matter of did he get sorry, Vulture you? Oh no, just make a poor remark. Yeah, so my thoughts are that he's either captured or he got away. Yeah. All right. So, you guys, need any more information from this wellspring of uh, knowledge, or Bella just looks longingly into the room that Stu retreated into, knowing that she can't really do anything about this right now. All right, ever the salesman, he sees uh, your illusion, uh, illusionary eyes, look past me, says, uh, "You like what you saw, huh?" Well, you yeah, gotta act fast. Yeah, model you got there. I'm probably gonna be taking him to the Robo Swap Meet this weekend, so... Uh, this weekend? You come, yeah, if you could come by before them, you might be able to pick him up. Otherwise, who knows? He's got a fine mustache on him. Crash, what day is it? Uh, what day of the week is it? They don't have... It, it, is, it is the weekend, so you would have a whole week. Uh, the 20th would be uh, the Robo Swap Meet. Okay, I've got a week to make 50 gold. I can do this. Um, yeah, I I don't know what it's worth, but this is all I have right now. It's 26 silver. Could I put a down payment on it? Just promise you won't sell them to anyone else before the end of the week. Hmm. Mm. Sorry, just yeah, I could do that. I want 10% up front. 50 gold. Could, could, you, could someone spare me two and a half gold? Uh, Vulture's gonna yeah. walk over to the guy and take out a pouch. Oh, Va 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 Vashon's gonna walk up. Oh, sorry, sorry. Not Vashon's gonna walk up. Gashon's gonna walk up. <laughs> and he's gonna, he's gonna say, ah. uh, he's gonna say, hey, how's about we, uh, how's about we give you 25 today, take it out for a little test run, and then give you the rest later. Uh, and he says, uh, how do I know you ain't gonna just take it and run? And then Gashon shrugs and says, I tried. How about we just do 45 and take it off your hands now? Ooh, all right. Yeah, give me a, give me a diplomacy. Uh, Unless you're saying this in a menacing way. <laughs> This would be a DC 17. Private role or public? I mean, you'll know if you succeed or not. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he will take 45 gold and hand over uh, Steward to your custody. Dude. Is... Wash on. Does Wash on have 25 <laughs> on him? Because uh, I, I have a pouch of jewelry and coin that's worth 20 gold. Mm, okay. Over. So this is very much paying this man in like bottle caps and uh, like whatever's in your pocket kind of deal. Kind. Uh, I don't know. I this thing came. Someone put this on my sheet. I guess we had gotten right. this from we got the. Well, he the he uh, he he whis he whispers to you. Washington does. He says, uh, "I only got twenty five gold total. That's all the government gave me to operate with." They said they couldn't trust me with more money. 
I can give you more money later. Uh, oof. Riggs says, uh, that doesn't sound like 45 right now. Uh, well, how he, much uh, do we have together? I have 20. And he has 25? That, that sounds like enough. Please, please Vashon. Uh, I don't say, or whisper to him very quietly. He says, hey, it ain't my money anyways. Here you go. And he he was as important to me as Slick. To Wenrick Riggs, you got to stick it to the government whenever you can. Uh, Wenrick Riggs' eyebrow, well, he doesn't have eyebrows. His brow uh, raises, like, say what? Uh, but he goes in the house, uh, and he comes back out with Stuart. Bella, like, throws her arms around Stu and uh, yeah. just holds him for a minute. And All then, right, Stu, uh, Stu says, uh, I am not that sort of servant. You are the best kind of servant. And then she just takes him by the hand and kind of leads him out of, out of the shop. All right. Uh, as Vulture as Vulture leaves, she would like pull him aside and thank him uh, profusely, you know, uh, and uh, just tell him like, when I came to Alkenstar as a young girl, Stu was the only friend I had until I met Vashon. And when I got arrested, we were separated. I haven't seen him in what feels like a year. I was worried that he got parted out. And he uh, makes the best grilled cheeses. Don't tell me where he gets the stuff. Or don't ask me. Before uh, Vulture leaves, he's going to okay. ask uh, one Rick. You said you were a salvager, yes? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, uh, uh yeah, mm-hmm. Have you done business with another goblin named Gert? Gert, Gert, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me and Gert, we go way back. Good to know. May need some services later. Oh, on, on account of your voice box. Yes. Good doing business with you. Mm. All right. Uh, and then the answer, Bellinor's uh, thing, it's just going to say, friendship is important. Oh, I'll just give a pat on your shoulder and then continue walking. Dang. Okay. Um, as you head down the street to the warehouse... Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, trying to fix something in this scene real quick. Good news, Stack. Now you don't need to hold all my things. <laughs> I'm sure. These minis, they do not like um, having their art changed and then switching scenes. Like, I don't know why they hate that so much, but I've tried so many different things uh, to do it. And it's just like, just be the art that I tell you to be. And they're like, no, you can't change who we really are. And it's very, it's very vexing to me. Uh, let's see. All right. I'll try to I'll try to post you guys over and see if it works. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Yeah, I think it worked this time. Okay. Take you over to the map. All right. Let me get some different music, I guess. Uh, let's see. Another large warehouse. All right. So, as you guys approach the workshop exterior, um, let's see. You, um, I'm assuming, would have your exploration actions on. So let me prompt you for those. Um. Mm 
Mm, oh, investigate. All right, give me an investigation roll. Would that be recall knowledge or and it's not? Let's see. No, wait, maybe that's in actions macro. Yeah, it, it is. It is a recall knowledge, and it is. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that you are making the warehouse the target of your investigation. Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I was. I can have two, so I'd like to make the warehouse my investigation, but I'd also like to make mm. our particular uh, mark my investigation as well. Okay, Co Kosawana. Got it. Yes, Kosawana. Okay. All right. And then we got defend. We got avoid notice. We have another investigate. So give me a recall knowledge. Stack the deck. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what are you up to, discretion, with your exploration? Do we do we lose them? Uh, yeah, they went AFK because fire alarm. Yeah, they oh, can't talk to the fire alarm. Yeah. Oh shit. Know, okay. They've gone back. All right. Uh, can you guys see the map? He yeah, says search. Oh, they're gonna do a search. Okay, cool. Okay. He's then... in the Discord chat. All right, I will have them search real quick before you go any further. I re totally remember which one they are. Yeah, it's a dwarf. Yes, of course. Uh, here we go. Perception. Um, you said we can trade hero cards, right? Uh, yes. Because I have one. I think that stack the deck would do well with. I don't what think I, I can use it. Oh, right, hold on, give me a second. I'm gonna draw one, actually. So what was this thing? The Aura of Protection. It has something to do with spell slots. Let's see. Can I post it? That'd be easier than explaining it. So All right. Use All damage equal to... Oh, okay, yeah, so okay. if you cast a spell, you'll gain resistance to all damage, is my understanding of it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I have Grazing Blow or Reckless Charge. Which one do you want? Grazing Blow sounds good. Oh, that's uh, the one that gets a crit. Oh, hate you. Yeah. These, okay. the... mm, Let's see, Reckless mm. Charge. After taking two consecutive strike actions. Yeah, I can't use Reckless Charge. This is the kind of Pokemon trading. You gotta do it quietly in chat. Like, all right, you know, we're trying to run the game here. Sorry. Um, all right. So, uh, in, unless otherwise noticed uh, or noted, the outer walls of the warehouse are made out of stone with high, narrow slits for windows designed to let in sunlight but block out prying eyes. Um, you can see that there is a window. Uh, window. And a door. Um, let me check. Those windows are shuttered, though. Uh, and then there is a door uh, up ahead. On your right. So the, the kind of the far end where the end of the building is. And then it would turn into a dark alleyway. Pick out the alleyway. Yeah. We can now the prepare. building itself is about um, thirty feet high. About uh, sorry, forty feet high. So it's a big, big ass like square building, and it's got one of them like you know flat warehouse roofs, like in the Batman comics, so you could like fight crime and stuff on the roof. And you guys did see that there were some skylights on the roof, and that uh, one of the skylights was definitely, like, smashed. Uh, this building right here just represents sort of a rundown, sort of ramshackle uh, building. There's a good chance that it's just full of, like, homeless people and or, like, thugs possibly just rodents of unusual size some combination therein but if you could find a way um to the second floor of this building you might be able to use it to access the roof of this building well do Al you want to do a skylight entrance again yeah. <laughs> alternative so, uh, alternatively you could fit you know you could patrol the rest of the exterior uh maybe check out the the front door the back alley um, you do know that there is a back end of this warehouse, it is likely where the um, the loading bay would have been. Yeah, 
I would rather like check out everything around this building first before we make a decision. Okay. That's just me. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather, rather go around to the back before sure. we climb the roof. All right, so those of you who are investigating uh, and perceiving, you realize that not only is this window shuttered closed, uh, but the window itself is brick and mortared up. Oh. Hmm. And this area of town, at this time of day, it's not, like, crazy busy, but there is, you know, other people on the road. Like, there is foot traffic kind of coming and going. And it, the occasional car, an occasional, you know, carriage, dinosaur rider, that sort of thing. Just Alcastar stuff. Try to not be suspicious. I could try and scry in there if you want, but that's a spell. That's a spell. So, vultures, you turn the corner, you can see that this window smashed open. And that there are a ton of windows along the side of this building. And towards the end of the alley, it looks like there is a wood railing of some sort for, like, a porch? Question mark? Um, uh, as you look in the window, uh, you can see what looks like an office. Um... Go ahead and give me a speak. Uh, it would be a hidden, a hidden seek, a hidden seek. Let me smooth out of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, as you look in, you can see that there are uh, what looks like mannequins made out of wicker um like woven wicker uh mannequins there is one standing uh to the side of the door um there's the front door and then there's a side door over here um that's with you using you know yeah the lean in function and then you do see that sitting at the desk is another uh mannequin and then there is a door sort of in the back corner of the room uh the room itself it definitely has the look of like this used to be a business office but nobody has used this business office in a while and it's just full of junk um it just seems to be piles and piles of uh of junk and clockwork uh parts and clock parts uh you can see wooden boxes everywhere uh, and the walls have various nails and hooks attached to them in a seemingly haphazard way. Um, small tools uh, and bags hang from these uh, seemingly random hooks. Uh, and you do see a hand-lettered sign uh, on the far corner door that says Workshop. And then you see a sign on th the other door that says WS. Uh, we'll relay that to everyone here uh this could be a possible entry point did he get tired of writing workshop so he just wrote w asking the other one <laughs> also apologies i had to wait for the fire brigade to turn up and give someone a 200 euro fine for burning a pizza oh <laughs> they burned a pizza oh man i don't know what they burned it happens occasionally. Occasionally? Oh my god. It's a 12-story building. I was explaining to my kid who's struggling to learn to drive. I was like, there are people that would burn down their house if they made a Pop-Tart. I was like, everyone's <laughs> good and bad at different things. Like, you will you will overcome this. I mean... All right. Is so it... As you reach the back of the of the place, you do notice that hey, yeah, this is um, wood railing, and there's like a stone uh, loading bay here, and there are a bunch of loading bay doors. Um, one of the doors does not seem as um, 
wide as the others. And as you move around the corner and enter, you should suddenly see more because of how roofs work yeah. in this map. Yeah. There's a lot of doors. Okay, well, this room looks nice and big, maybe. Do we want to bash our way in? Why don't we try just, you know, either opening or lockpicking first? Yeah, Bulger will test one of the doors. Okay, I'll try this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, Vulture, you swing the loading bay doors open. <laughs> uh, and uh, as you look in, you can see a big open uh, warehouse. So, there's a lot going on in this uh, in this area. Let me try my best to kind of give you, give you the information you need to survive. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're part All of right. from over there. So, several sloping ramps uh, lead to a six-foot-high wooden loading platform. That's what you're looking at right now. Um, that spans uh, half the workspace. Uh, and there are six ten-foot-wide bay doors that line the western wall, which is where you're standing, is in one of those bay doors. Um, the platform is covered in hundreds of old scuff marks from wooden and metal wagon wheels. Uh, the loading area, where you guys currently are, is an exterior area open to the street to the west. A sloping wooden roof held up by thick wooden beams protects the loading area from inclement weather. The bay doors are about three feet higher than the street level, perfect for rolling heavy materials directly from a wagon bed straight into the building. So, theater of the mind, right? Uh, Vulture, you would have opened these doors, but you would have to step up three feet to get into the building. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like okay, the, okay. the truck loading uh, bays. Where exactly. You're trying to... Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yep, yep. So for those of you who might not be familiar with this process, uh, you guys are on this flat space, and then yeah, uh, the door the, yeah, the door the door that he opened is actually here, and then the interior area is higher up than where you guys currently are. And then what Vulture sees is that there is a ramp that goes down back to, you know, ground zero, essentially, uh, yeah, through the rest of the warehouse. Is. Correct. Yep. Oh, no, I can't reach the doorknob. All right. <laughs> <Someone's been laughs> uh, yep. Failure. Your mission ends. Yep. If you are short, your mission's over. Uh, so that's uh, that's the end of your oh. career. Hey, you guys um, give you <laughs> uh, And that's all you could see for uh, immediately. But as you scan the room... Um, Let's see. I think I have to make it somewhat dark in there, but not too dark, because it's afternoon and the skylight's busted and the weather is clear. So, let me make a slight adjustment to the lighting here. There we go. Uh, we'll bring it to like there, and then I'll put some lights outside so you guys can feel like you're in that sunny Wild West setting. All right. All right, great. Okay. So the question now is, um, what do you do? Well, I think the rest of us should also endeavor to get inside, so I'm going to open this door. Oh, okay, okay. Oh! All right. So as you open that door, um, mm -hmm. all, the, all the same flavor text, uh, but you have a vantage point here that shows a bit more of the room further beyond lit by the um the sunlight coming in and your dark vision um which i think uh, both you and uh vulture have dark vision yep. you you both would see that there are several doors along the eastern wall here and an area over in the northeast corner where there are sandbags literally like just lining the walls and it looks like explosive uh, munitions testing has been going on. Yeah, you also see that there are a great number of partially assembled clockworks uh, all throughout the workshop. And as you open it, you guys start to hear the incessant uh, ticking of clocks. Well, I get in here. I'm gonna. Oh, let me I wanna, like, get up on the ledge and then okay. put a hand down for better to grab. I do uppies 
hands. Because because you need to turn these clocks. There's ticking noise. Make them stop. I will do my best. What a smart person. I look back to Vashon and Stu and say, maybe wait here until we scope it out. Do I actually open this one? Hmm. Hmm. Can I, like, sense okay. for traps? Uh, yeah, if you're you're investigating, but if you want to switch to um, searching, you can. Here, I'll throw up a freshie for your uh, exploration okay. action. All right, so if you are searching, uh, throw me out a blind um, seek. And if you are investigating, uh, just hit that recall knowledge button. Seek. All right, so anybody ever seen this? There was this movie called Back to the Future. Has anybody seen that movie? It's a uh, guy time travels so he can hopefully not bang his own mom, and um, which is a tough call. It was a tough call. But there is uh, a scene where there's just a shitload of clocks, including the very creepy Felix the Cat clock. Um, it's like that. Like, there's just clocks everywhere, just ticking slightly off uh, or in rhythm uh, everywhere. You look. All right. Uh, stack. Psst. Traps. Psst. Ah, nothing to worry about. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel assured. Confidently uh, discretion, you can confirm. It's super safe. Awesome. It's super safe. Everyone don't worry. There's nothing <laughs> dangerous in here. Just, oh no! Wait, now what is Except this thing? Except for these robots that may or may not have like explosive armaments or something. I don't know. So this is like a wind-up robot, and he talks to like, can I just like? Are you gonna crank to... it? Because I'm. <laughs> Please don't crank it while I'm standing next to it. Uh, maybe it's like Stu. Maybe it's helpful. Maybe. No one this is as helpful as Stu. To be kind of. Uh, you may. Where was that boarded up window at? I think it was over here. Yeah, yeah over here. Go check out what this explosive is all about. This is probably where he was testing. Oh, wow, that's a full crater. Mm -hmm. hmm. Heavy munitions. Oh, I went somewhere. Oh, you went upstairs. Nice. Oh. Oh. If you Where's go. If you go back, uh, if you move your mini and then move back, you should come back down the stairs. If you oh, no, I button. found out. I was in a dark queue for a moment. but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's dark up there. Oh, okay. Is yeah. everybody going up the ladder? Is that the, is that the play? <laughs> I was just wondering about no, the vintage was... pint. You're yeah, saying it's dark like Well, it was, but now it's not. It's, you just have to walk out of to the walk down the stairs. And... Can we check there? out what's in here before we uh, leave this floor? Investigate everything. Sure. Do you want to go to these? These mannequins look friendly. This is the room, the workshop room that we passed by earlier. Culture was going to go over to. Actually, say it was like a office. Oh, there's a bed up here. Maybe we can find some of his notes. So far, I haven't made heads or tails of what's going on in this room. Can you just off exploring by yourself? Uh, I got. You just have to shout that one. There, there's a bed up here, and then looks like some notes. Um... Ooh, I like notes. Grab right, the as notes. You, as you okay, open like, the door, the uh, Vulture, uh, and enter this room, uh, let me see if anything interesting happens. Hmm. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, as you enter the room, um, the clockwork uh, that was looking like a mannequin that was sitting in the chair uh, swivels in the chair to look at you and stands up. The one by the door 
uh, begins to move as well. And they roll themselves into initiative. And then stack, you are not here. Oh wait, you just ran down the ladder. Okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good timing. Good timing. Okay. Oh, and then uh, Bashan will roll in, and I'm going to assume that Steward is not going to uh, roll in. We'll have him run for cover. So. Yeah, unless he wants to give me a grilled cheese mid-combat. That's about all I can do. <laughs> mm, I'll keep that in mind for the, uh, the B-team stuff. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and roll everybody in. Maybe? Uh, roll everybody in. There it goes. All right, and I'll grab some combat music. Ooh. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, wow, they beat us. All right. Uh, begin. Okay, so this compromise door warden uh, is going to uh, look right at Vulture, who is the intruder, um, and then it is going to. I have to check something. At the beginning of its turn, it must roll a d4. It gets a four. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, to determine how many actions it has for the turn to a oh. maximum of three actions per turn. Okay. Um, and then its speed each turn is ten times the result of that die roll uh, to a maximum of 25 feet. Okay. That's, that's weird, but all right. Um, you realize, looking at it, that not only is this thing made out of a weird sort of like wicker instead of the normal metal... But it is also um, badly damaged. Um, and it looks like it was just sort of hastily pieced back together. Uh, all right. It is going to already have its stuff loaded. Oh, nice. This guy doesn't have such a thing. Cool. And then it is going to... Oh, fun. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's going to move towards you, uh, and then you can't push someone into a space that already has a creature in it, right? There's no, there's no, like, bowling pin rules or anything? Oh, man, Is there? Don't... Yeah, okay. Um, there right. should be. Right? That'd be fun. Um, okay, as it moves up to you, it is going to try and strike you with its fist. Uh, it gets a 25, which is going to be a hit. Uh, for 11. And then the creature attempts to shove, uh, you. And this doesn't count against its multiple attack penalty. So, here is the shove. Uh, 17 isn't going to do it. And then it's got one more action it can use. Um, mm -mm -mm. Okay. It's just going to try and punch you again. There we go. With map. Oh, it applied map even though it wasn't supposed to. That was supposed to be at a plus 14. So that would have actually shoved you. So it will push you that way since they can't push you directly into that space and then it will move into your space and then it sees there's a person here and i think for push on a monster it does have to spend a pac-man for it yeah so that yeah so that will be its turn all right nice all right uh Bellinor, it's you 
All right, I am ready. So I'm going to be in my turn. By oh, first. wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. As part of pushing someone through a doorway, it activates this ability. Huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. God damn it. <laughs> Listen, it's such a treat to not have Claw Claw Bite that I'd have to use every single one it's of fair. these dumb abilities. So okay. <laughs> no, that's a great ability. That just cost yeah. me an action. Right. Yeah. He's a spice of life. Oh my god, that completely fucked up everything I was going to do this turn. All right, you I'm going to start that? Whoever designed this robot, you did a good thing. Mm. They did it. They did it. All that right. was awesome. All right, first action. I open the door. Okay. What? And then, uh, from here... Oh man, I really had the whole thing set up for this. I guess I'm just going to have to forego that. I'm going to... Um, this is probably going to go poorly for me, but I'm going to attack the one in front of me with an alchemist fire. Does it take an attack of opportunity against me? Mm. What a great question. Uh, it doesn't because it used its reaction to slam the door. Hell yeah. Okay, so it's targeted. Here comes. Oh, that menu is not working. Why do my macros never work? I just gotta go to my actions tab. It's so specific that the trigger is something through a doorway. <laughs> I know. I feel, I feel like I'm playing bingo whenever I use these monsters. I'd like to because, use a hero point. Because shit is so specific, and it's like, it's like, I actually oh. did it! I actually did the thing! Uh, Okay, that's probably going to do it. That's that a hit. That is going to hit. Before I All do right. this, I bought a potency rune or striking rune. I don't really mm -hmm. know how to apply it. I guess I can figure this out later. Um, okay. I guess I could just add one extra damage die to this. So here we go. Damage. Those are D8s. So here comes another D8. Oh, it applied it, it looks like. Oh, wait. Did it? Okay. No, yeah. It I, this it, normally this is a moderate. Oh, so a moderate always does 2D8. Does, exactly. Well, I got a question. Would striking apply to bombs? I don't know. That's why I asked. Oh. oh. It does not. It does not. It would be like if you put some daggers in there and stuff, it would apply to that. But the bombs scale on their own based on their quality. Yeah, you can just sort get of, out of bombs. Yeah. So don't worry. If you need to yeah. refund the striking rune, we could do okay. that later. Yeah, we could That's do that fine. later. Yeah, yeah. All right, so me. then... Okay, okay, thank you, Robin Zoro. All right, so that is... I don't. I think we discovered I don't get the splash damage additionally, so it's just sixteen. It's damage. already calculated in, yeah. But yeah. the guy next to it's going to get splashed. Yeah, and I think it's calculating. Yep, it's calculating for my new ability, which is calculated splash. So now my splash damage does the same as my intelligence modifier. Oh hell yeah! Okay. So he takes four damage, and then the other one takes sixteen, and then I will use my last Pac-Man to stride. Uh, if the other okay. one's taking damage, and then aren't you and Vulture also taking damage? I have the ability to modify my. Uh, Splash zone as a uh, alchemist okay. bomber, so no one, none of our friendlies get hit. So that's Beautiful. ten feet of movement, and then I'm back here, and that's my turn. All right, you know who doesn't have that and likes to throw bombs? It's a very tall man named uh, Gashon, uh, whose turn is up next. <laughs> All right, he turns to the stew and he says, uh, "Yeah, that's when they told me you're VIP." Can you believe it? I I knew it. I knew it the whole time. My mama knew it. Oh, uh, hey, uh, just a sec, dude. And he's gonna use a stride action to get to here. He's gonna line up the shot. It's a it's a long lob here through a doorway. Uh, seems legit. He'll go ahead and target. I'm gonna give them some cover, obviously. Uh, here we go. And Vashon will take the take the throw. Range increment of 30. I don't know what that means. Not my problem. Here we go. He's going to throw a... Um, you don't want to throw that. Okay, here we go. This is a good one. Alright. Uh, critically hitting. <laughs> he says, That's how it's done! He is a VIP. Oh. Apparently it, it's not done a lot of damage here, but that's fine. Um, okay, so it does 2d, two, two so it does 8 damage. <laughs> okay. Rough. It is rough. Alright, and it doesn't look like it had any splash on there, did it? It does have splash. I wonder why it didn't uh, feed the splash out. It's 4 cold damage and splash. Alright, uh, so Vulture, you take 4 cold damage, and uh, Dynamic Compromise Door Warden takes 4 splash damage. All right, and then that's the uh, took it out, threw it. That's the turn. 
Uh, discretion, you're up. Tambo. Okay. Really? Well, mm. Mm. I mean, I could accept that. Mm. Or... Or... Could be greedy and waste the hero points. So I'm doing that. Let's go. All right. So oh, I have you quit. one thing I'll get punished. Okay. So I have a cool thing now where if I tumble through someone, then they are flat footed to me. Ooh, that's cool. All right. Put it in chat. No way, that's not it at all. Oh, well. Um, that oh, one. Yeah. Flamboyant athlete. Oh, okay. Oh, that's uh, still not nope, it. Nope, um, nope. I'm just... <laughs> Tumble nah. behind. There we go. All right, all right. If, if the third one had also not had it, I was going to start doubting. I was yeah, going to start yeah, doubting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I will trip them. Oh, okay. Which off guard doesn't even apply to, so it was entirely irrelevant. But go trip. Hmm. Plus 14. I rolled a 2. Mm. It'll mm. be really stupid to ace a second hero point on this one turn without mm -hmm. every, any stakes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, of course, success. Alright, so uh, they are prone. And I think something else happens. I they take you're... some damage. A little bit yeah. of damage on the way down? 1d6 bludgeoning damage. Oof. Better roll high. Oh, baby. Okay. It takes, uh, oh, it should not have taken all six, uh, because it has resistance to oh, physical, yeah. physical damage, yeah. So it takes one damage as it falls prone. All right, and nice. I will. That was three, that was move, trip. Then I'll use a finisher. Okay. Because we got a new finisher now. It's called... Combination finisher. Which I I don't have yet, so I don't have that. I'll just do an all finisher, let's go. Okay. Confident finisher. Claw. Um I didn't apply map. So that is a twenty to hit. Twenty to hit is going to hit. Okay. Go damage. I don't know if it precise works, but we'll find out. Alright, let's see. It takes a little damage. Okay, that is all. Alright. Uh, play past this to Vulture. Alright. I'm going to move where I can and it's a massive, muscular dwarf doing all these things, of course. Nice, nice. Alright, so you're gonna shoot through the doorway and the other guy at this dude, so I'll give him a little- I'm gonna give him a little bit of cover here. Yeah, so... Alright. One shot, one kill, because I did stealth for initiative. Uh, that creature hasn't acted yet, so surprise attack, it's off guard. Nice, nice. Uh... Let me that's... turn your volume up, you come in solo. Oh, I'm also uh, kind of well. mumbling, my bad. Uh, okay, no worries. Um, All also, right. one shot, one kill allows me to draw as reaction. Okay, and here comes the first shot at that creature. Uh, 29. Wow, yeah, 29 is going to hit uh, See critically. The striking crit does with you now. Nice. Uh, Oof, that was well. that was a low roll for 33 damage. Uh, bloodying the creature. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to use my new level four ability called Running Reload. Oh, that's cool. And I am going to stride. And it's not just a stride; it's a step or a sneak. That's yep. that's awesome. So I will. Here and reload at the same time. What? 
sure. Oh, okay. It, it already did that. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, that's it for me. All three packs. All right. Uh, as your turn ends, uh, this clockwork to the north, uh, its eye lights activate. And let's see, you are close enough. Uh, so yeah, it's going to move towards you uh, and just, I guess, start punching. So it's going to target and it's going to go ahead and use Fist. Uh, that is going to hit uh, for 17. And then... It is going to punch again uh, because there's no door to push you through. So it's programming. It's just all out of whack now. Um, you feel that compared to the wicker mannequins up front, those must be naked versions of these guys because this guy is armored and uh, hitting a lot harder than the mannequin that you dealt with up front. Like this is this is a real clockwork door warden. Those are more like um, those are the frames. You know. This is the full build. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are damaged frames. This is like the the actual model, uh, almost finished basically. Uh, all right, and then it's gonna tr it's gonna try to punch again with map. Uh, and that's gonna be a hit. Uh, here is the damage. Oh, oh, crash your dice or question marks if you wanted to be that. Are they really? I yeah. don't. I don't have secret rolls turned on. And we still we still see the result at the end. But... We see the results. Uh, we don't see the die. I don't know. On the I'll have to. I'll have to check my settings for why it's doing that because I don't have anything special as far as I know. It might have been something in the update. Well, I'm down. Of course. Oh shit. Okay. All right. Uh, play passes to uh, dynamic compromised uh, door guard. They're gonna roll a D four see how their turn goes a one womp womp so they only have one um action this turn and they only have a 10 speed uh so they will just use it to punch uh at discretion all right here we go uh that is going to be a hit uh for 16 uh points of damage All right, as that one's turn ends, uh, north of the other Clockwork Warden that activated the far north part of the room, uh, you see another one of these things turn itself on. Uh, it spends one Pac-Man to grab its head off of this shelf and a second Pac-Man to screw the head on. Uh, it then spends a third Pac-Man uh, Heading towards uh, the battlefield. There we go. All right. Um, as that one's turn ends, mm -mm -mm. let's see. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, let me let me check something here. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. All right. Bella, you can see uh this creature fly out from underneath the table here. Uh it is a spherical um clockwork with uh, bird wings and spider legs and a big central eye uh, you with your uh, crafting would recognize this as a clockwork spy uh, a surveillance drone as it were uh, it is going to spend all three of its pac-mans flying up and out of the skylight up above so whatever that means. Is it, um, that. Is it exactly. above? Yeah. 
Oh, sorry. The ceiling is 40 feet up, and three um, flights would give it 75. So it would have kind of gone up through the skyline and kind of... It's gone. Like, okay, like, I, I mean, if you, if you have a, a good way to fly or get to the roof quickly, maybe. But yeah, it's it's definitely uh, trying to get, get away from here as quickly as possible. I don't have a good way to fly like that. Um... Yeah, no, Plus, I mean, I have, have a long range of You attacks. have this big boy right here, and then you do have an ally down right there. Mm -hmm. So, with what I saw with this clockwork, does it imply mm -hmm. that their heads are, like, snap on, snap off? <laughs> um, you, I mean, if you have, if you have crafting, um, and right. the, the tools equipped, you can use those. We discussed this before with clockworks, uh, to try and perform actions on them, like winding them down and uh, oh. And things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to ask. Like, it's not yeah. like a simple. It was. Okay. It was mostly like a flavor thing. Um, but you know, also like, yeah, they. You can't just walk up and spin their heads and they they pop off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to tag this one with my new short bow, and but I'm gonna do a spell strike, which means right. I have to cast a spell now, which means I will roll my d hundred now. Okay. D twenty, not D hundred. D twenty. So we'll do that first, and then. Okay, and today is the thirteenth, and it's um after two on the thirteenth. Let's see what you got. After two on the thirteenth, two p.m. is surge time. All right, so this can be a seven or less. Will cause a. I got a four. Okay, give me a D hundred. A 92 or oh, 29 okay 29 all right spicy spicy uh let's see 29 is uh a magical maelstrom a swirling storm of magical energy uh fills a 40 foot area burst centered on you question mark because you you cast a spell into the weapon right yeah okay um, creatures within the storm must attempt fortitude saves, uh, or be affected randomly, uh, based on this table. Um, okay, so, 40 foot burst, and the burst comes and goes. Okay, so everyone within 40 feet of stack needs to give me a fortitude save. And the DC of the fortitude save is 19. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's see. So Ketron's at forty-five, so they're good. Vashon's at fifty. So Vulture, um, uh, it would just be it'd be you, Stack, and the two rob robots. All right. So here's their fortitude saves. They got pretty good forts. Not the greatest. Maybe enough to get a nineteen though. Oh, nice. Okay. So, um, Katrin was out of range, so she didn't have to roll. I do need stack. You're in the emanation, oh, so you, yeah, yeah. Right. you, you are the burst, myself. so you have to roll it. Yep, yep. Ooh. Okay. Uh, you guys, before I reveal it, you committed to these rolls? I'll, I'll use a no, hero point. And... Okay, okay. You have no idea what could happen because this is a random effect. Unless they have oh. a misfortune trait. Oh, you could see that a cost vulture. Huh. You're already down, so. <laughs> uh... Wait, what, what was that about misfortune? Does that mean they can't reroll saves against it either? Like... Well, you say, I'm just saying, if it had that trait, then. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... I don't know if it does, but. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Alright, so let's go through it. Stack, you make the save. Um, so, you will get a status, but for only one round. Um, Vulture, you failed, so you're going to have the status for one minute. Um, and then the clockwork that critically succeeded will not have a status at all. Alright, so Stack, roll a d4 for me. And Vulture, roll a d4 for me. Okay, so Stack, um, you are flat-footed, 
uh, for one round. So you're flat-footed until your turn comes back around. Okay. All right. And then, uh, let's see. The vulture and the clockwork guy. Uh, you guys are dazzled. Oh. Yeah. yeah. For a minute. As the magic, uh, I guess, sears your optic sensors. All right. Um, which I think dazzled is just in there somewhere. There we go. It's a little sparkle. There you go. Okay. And is... uh, now, Stack, you can actually uh, do your thing. All right. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to get Spell Strike with... Uh, going to imbue my arrow with Shocking Grafts. So okay. here's the strike for the bow. I will re-roll this one. Mm. Okay, second hero point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, re-roll. Re-roll the cube new result. Hey, that's gonna hit. Okay. Okay, and then damage. All right, all right. Here's the damage for shocking grass. He's metal, so he takes all, some extra stuff. Okay, what's the extra stuff? Uh, oh, it's already built in. 2d12, okay, yeah, he takes 3d12 and 1d4 right. plus 1 persistent electricity damage. Oh, damn. Okay. I wish it generated that effect for me, uh, but I can add persistent myself. Uh, let's see. He says 1d4 persistent electric? 1d4 plus 1. That's 2. One plus 2? Yeah, it's oh, heightened. Heightened, oh, though, yeah. Okay. Um, and what's the flat nice. roll to get rid of it? 15? Uh, 15. Yeah. That's a, okay. All right. He now is going to... Oh, and they have a weakness 5 to uh, the lightning damage. So that's huge. Or electricity. So that's huge. All right. Anything else from stack? All right. And then I use my last pack, man. I use Arcane Cascade. And then I'm done. Okay. Uh, all right. Play passes to Ketrin. Ketrin, this guy. Let's make it magic. Uh, Vulture, in a bad way. These much bigger and heavier armed uh, door wardens seem to be uh, aggressive. Can you leave discretion to their own devices to aid your allies? What do you do? Uh, yeah, I am gonna look uh, sadly at discretion. Like I was gonna kind of come help you, but uh, sorry, they're weak anyway. You'll be fine. Uh. And all this, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to actually move. All this past uh, fantasy seven days of downtime, you've seen Ketrin in her sweats jogging. Uh, nice. <laughs> so uh, now I can, I can do more things. I move 20. I, then I do doctor's visitation, and okay. I can move and battle medicine in the same action. Amazing. Very nice. God, very nice. Yeah. So, uh, here, Vulture, is some healing for you. Sorry, Mother Superior. I tend to go very <laughs> often. <laughs> oh, oh, sweet. There critical you go. Critical success. Oh. oh, yeah. You left those bad rolls last week. This is good stuff now. This is good stuff now. All I right. Did. There you go. I have Excellent. 22 HP. And then I am going to... Uh, raise my shield and uh, make some very threatening noises at the clockwork door warden. Stop hitting my friend. Nice. Hit me. I'm much more threatening than this person on the ground bleeding out and dying. Okay. It's eye, uh, it's eye sensor. It's just blinking erratically from the uh, from the dazzled effect, but it kind of gets your meaning, and it just tries to turn to look at you. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, dazzled is yeah. rough, y'all. You it means that everyone has concealment from you. Yeah. Uh yeah, so uh, that's that's rough. That's rough. Alright. What else you got for us, uh, Ketchum? My uh, last action was raising my shield, so I'm beautiful. Alright. Uh play continues. Like Compromise door warden. <laughs> it's gonna roll a D four. Let's see what happens. A two. So it gets two pack of mans this turn. Um, and it gets 20 feet of movement. All right. It is going to spend one Pac-Man to stand up. Uh, 
don't know if that triggers from anybody, but there it's it is. Not. All right. Uh, and then it's going to use its second Pac-Man to punch you. Because you're breaking in. You're a bad guy. Uh, 28 is going to hit four. Uh, 15 points of damage. And that's it. It's out of Pac-Man's. Uh, Bella, to you. From where I'm standing, would it have cover from the like corner of the doorway? The the one this this guy. Um, I would say since there's no one in front of the door like there was for uh, your your other allies, it would not have cover. It's Wonderful. it's filling up it's filling up the door frame. And I can still see discretion, so I can exclude them from my blast range. So I'm going to put into my hand a bottled lightning. Just All like right. A... One. I gotta take that off. Every time I do this, I have to de take the thing I was using previously out of my hand. Too. Okay, so um, I got that. I Before I do that, I you, she you see her, like, math lady meme and she devises a stratagem. No! Oh. And uh, <laughs> now I... What well, happens if I apply this effect? Okay, yep. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I've rolled my flat 16 and now I'm going to use that number as part of my attack roll for this attack. Mm -mm. Um, I don't know how to apply that. Um, just but... the attack. It should okay. just be there. Okay, that'll be cool. Yeah, it, it, works. Should, it, should, it should offer it up to you now that you've banked it. Yep. Okay. I cool. want to point out to anybody curious, that think, 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 got it with the zoom in and all that. That's just raw foundry. That's not a mod or anything. Well, let's see. Did it work oh. there? It still hit, but I feel oh. like... No, it definitely didn't. Did it, mm -hmm. it did, did it have a toggle when you went to make the attack? Sometimes there's like a little toggle yeah. that appears. I can attack again and see. Look at the yeah, you can menu find it you have no bottle lightning. Oh, but I'm sorry. What'd you say, Josh? Uh, open up the attack again and then look at. Yeah, it's know. gonna make me put a whole new bottle in my hand to do here, that. Here, well, here. Why don't we try an unarmed strike? There you go. Um, I don't see it queued up when I click the unarmed strike, guys. I don't see. Okay keep lower or anything like that so, so we'll i have a plus 11 it would have been a 27 to hit all right 27 would have hit but not critically ah so okay. it's all good all right uh so give me that damage uh 13 is uh, going to hit uh, and then four. the other one will a lot take extra four. yep and then it'll take four plus its weakness so <laughs> one of them uh you know cartoon like uh electricity kind of courses through it and uh you can see all of it's like inner workings and circuitry and then you know it just kind of into like a fried heap on the ground the lightning splashes onto dynamic who takes an ass load of damage uh and then that is that what else you got bella right. i have one more action and with that i would like to use my um engineering lore to look at all the robots in the room and try to just figure out if any of these other ones are going to pop to life based on oh, like sure. their construction yeah. give me a recall knowledge Okay, as you look around uh, the room, the only other one here that uh, looks like it would be um, anywhere close to completion is this one right here. Okay. Uh, like but, a but it seems that it, it would require one of the other robots to come over and activate it. Hmm. Okay, and then All I'm right. just gonna look over at Stu and say, "Get, get over, get away from the fight." All right, and he he uh he moves to the stairs and he crouches down and peeks over the top of the stairs. And he he respects the authority of this owl. All <laughs> right, He's a new owner. Anyways, um yeah, that's my turn. Okay, um uh, as your turn ends, you guys see um flying up from some debris over here another clockwork spy uh this one is going to fly up and over and towards the back door and then it flies out the back door and around the corner i'm sure it's fine uh all right vashon's turn he says uh i don't think it's fine <laughs> i don't know if you guys saw them drones escape but if they're going to get help, who knows how much time we have before whoever shows up. I don't want to put any pressure on you. That's all. I just want to make sure you don't feel pressured. 
Discretion. I don't have any you reactions. Good? I was good. You still good? Yeah. That's good. All right. Uh, they're gonna move to here, and they don't. They don't want to splash uh, Ketrin. She's nice. So they're going to attack uh, Independent. That one pays their own bills, drives their own car. Uh, all right. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna that's gonna miss. Uh, you have Vash, points. Vash on, yeah, Vashon asks if uh, he's allowed to use any of your fan inspirations. You know, he heard you had a lot. He just, you know, I mean, if you. Ah, uh, sure. Oh, yeah. What sure. really? He's, oh damn! I mean, he's, he's probably good, good, good damage. I mean, it could hurt it. We're in a bad way. I don't know. Yeah. Somebody can. Somebody mm -hmm. can say no. We have five. Okay. You, take one. you get we it, boo. We have boot. to burn them up so that people think that we need more. Oh, fair, fair, fair. Um, okay, sweet. Uh, oh, he, you know what? He has the far lobber, so there wouldn't even be a... Oh, no, no, all his bombs have a range of 30 instead of 20. It's already factored in. Oh, that's hype. What's this one do? Oh, my bad. He does have the safety thing. I should have checked. Anyways, <laughs> I hope that wasn't the factor that, that kills you, Vulture. <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hold on, hold on. That would have just uh, survived. Critically failed. So he didn't critically fail. He almost critically failed. Okay. Well, I have to roleplay him appropriately because he do got a special uh, feature called punchable. Um, so I have to make sure that he comes across as punchable. Uh, all right. In that case, uh, sure, he'll reroll. Nice. Man. See, you just gotta ask. You never know. It might it might work out. So just because he has calculated splash doesn't mean he has to exclude you. Oof, that made it worse. Okay. I mean, so, it's true. I must have not exactly been the nicest to him. All right, so he criti so he critically missed on that one, and I'm sorry. Um, and then he do have one more action left. Uh, he will do a recall knowledge for you guys. Uh, let me see. Uh, R S. Where did they put recall knowledge? Is it not on the dashboard anymore? Uh, let's see. Did they call it something different? No, I'm still the... recall knowledge on the basic. Action. Oh, I see. Everything got moved around because of the update. Okay. Yes, um. Bad. Yeah, he's unable to come up with anything more that you would know about these guys than you already did. All right. Uh, discretion to you. All right. Well, it'd be funny to trip him, so I will. Okay. Go trip. Ah, oh, it's a shame. He's wonderful balls, mm -hmm. by the way. Um. Okay. Well, I was just gonna trip him and then read lightning on them and just trip him. For oh, the next nice. Time. Okay. Yes, I, I guess you don't need to be tripped to have lightning breathed on you. It it looks around. It doesn't really want lightning breathed on it at all, sir. <laughs> that's uh, that's an option. <laughs> Well, okay. It is unfortunately not an option as I as this dwarf breathes right. deeply and then inhale exhales a spray of sand that just gets everywhere, everywhere all in noted. your mechanical bits. Oh my goodness! All right, it's coarse. <laughs> yeah, it gets everywhere. It begins Good. this robot's villain arc. Reflex save and check. All right, here's this reflex save. Ooh, that's nasty. Ooh, that's gonna be failed. double. 2d6. So that's 14. Uh, edit. Okay. Um, so 7, but then it's double 14, and then it takes another 5 on top of that. It is super dead. However, as you breathe sand everywhere, discharge electricity, it jostles the desk, activating the iron dart launcher trap built into the <laughs> desk. Um... Let's see. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, fortunately for you, it is aimed at the front door. Uh, so as the uh, the darts fire, whoever was coming in the door uh, oh. takes uh, 26 points of piercing damage. And it's a 20-foot line, so it would have gone out into oh the street. Yeah, it would have gone out into the street. <laughs> it's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> 
All right. Anyways, continue your turn. So this is like, do you just hear like a Wilhelm scream outside or something, or they go? <laughs> no, I mean the door is closed, so it's just like. Okay. I guess it would, shred, it would shred the door, right? Is this they, a they the door. Door. <laughs> like, oh yeah, all right. Out. Never mind. It blasts the door apart as this nail bomb goes off and fucking blasts the door open. All right, continue your turn. And that is all for me. Oh wait, all no, right. it's not. I have to first roll the dice and find out when I get my breath back. Three rounds. Okay. Of all so. the weird stuff and cool macros there are, I can't believe there's not a macro for breath weapons. Um, to help to help track that shit. That's weird to me. Um, mm. all right, Vulture, to you. The thing is that for monsters that are like, if a monster has that, then you can add it as an next temporary effect and it counts down. Uh, Vashon hands you back your four hit points. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, all right. <laughs> and what do you do? Uh, first I'm going to stand up from prone. Nice, nice. Uh, uh does that trigger this thing's reaction? You're uh, great question. Um, these are not the same robots from the bank, so they actually only have a reaction for slamming doors. <laughs> the European. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking specific. <laughs> doors have power in this world. Uh, yeah, definitely drop your wounded also. Uh, you can, I'll refund that as well. So, oh, okay. all right. Thank you. Yeah. Um... That's but point. as you as you rise up, your eyelids are like. Tut, 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 tut. Uh, you're pretty sure this is Ketrin, and you're pretty sure this is a robot. Optical sense. I just just flash <laughs> lights. Optical sensors. Yeah. Functioning. Just all, everything. Um, another Pac-Man to pick up my Archibus. Okay. Uh, with its stock, this thing is right next to me. Uh, I don't want to get punched by this thing again because they hurt. So I'm gonna spend uh, last Pac-Man to move away. A little rep tactical repositioning. Yep. All right, beautiful. And that's it for my turn. Okay, play passes to Clockwork Door Warden. All right, if you wanna, if you wanna throw down, we'll throw down. Uh, so they're gonna target you, or at least they think they're targeting you. And they're going to swing on you. They got to make a DC five flat check to hit you. Uh, they miss. <laughs> they will spend their second Pac Man. This time it'll have Map uh, to swing at you. All right, they they will hit if they um, if they can. Here we go. Why did it roll two dice? Huh. Oh, I rolled the flat check for me. Oh, I didn't have to roll it manually. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it takes a wild swing and misses. Then its second one with map, it just starts spinning its whole upper torso. You know how cartoon robot do. And then uh, those fists just hit over and over and over and over again in a flurry of uh, strikes. Uh, hitting you for 26 points of damage. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I will... I will reaction uh, shield block it. Okay. Um, so my shield's hardness is now 10. Nice. Um, so then me, so that leaves it with 16 points. So I take mm -hmm. eight, the shield takes eight. Is that right? Boy, that sounds right to me. Or is, okay. it, you both, or is it you both take that amount? Let's see. Or, yeah, we both take 16. It's yeah. one of the two. Uh, let's see. You gain shield block. Um, you snap your shield in place. The shield prevents you from taking the amount of damage up to its hardness. You and the shield take any remaining damage. So yeah, you both would take the remaining damage. The 16. Okay. Correct. Yeah. All right. All right. Holy shit. Okay. And then it's got one more action. It is going to push you. Um... But it doesn't auto push anymore because of revised edition. So it's going to go ahead and do an athletics on you. But the athletics would have map, so it would be minus five. What is your? I think it's against your fortitude. So what's your fortitude? Um, it's pretty high, I think, right? I'm it's plus a, eleven. Oh my god! So it's got twenty-one. All right, it is unable to push you. You are too too sturdy, and that is its turn. Okay. All right. Uh, play pass to this one. Oh, sorry. As its turn ends, it takes three plus five, eight points of lightning damage, and it has to do a recovery check, which 
It succeeds that. Hot damn. All right, independent clockwork warden. It doesn't like this guy. This guy's mean. Um, you might think, Stack, that it has to spend a Pac-Man to get closer to you. But it has 10-foot-long go-go gadget robot arms. Uh, oh. So it... <laughs> uh, and you hear it say something deep inside its body that sort of sounds like go-go gadget arms. Um, but uh, it definitely wasn't that. And then it's going to try and attack you. Uh, that is a critical hit. Okay. Come... All right. You got anything to mit mitigate it before I roll this? Or uh, good? I don't. I All use right. both of your points. Oh, right. Here we go. Uh, forty points of damage. I'm oh. out. What? What? You just get one so... shot? <laughs> yeah. God damn. All right, and then it's yeah, got. I... Uh, it looks around for another threat. It sees one. It's going to go clank, 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 clank uh, to here and here. And then it will use the second attack on Katrin. Uh, and it should get a flank from its buddy, even though it's dazzled. I don't think dazzle prevents you from providing a flank. But I trust this thing to do all the work. So here we go. Here is the fist is going to miss. Uh, and it did it did calculate it, so apparently Dazzle does not prevent you from giving a flank to an ally. Alright, sweet. And that is the robot's turns. Uh, Ketrin, to you. Another person is down. Wait, did I get skipped? Oh, no. Um, Sorry. remember when you go down, it moves your initiative to be right before the person that downed you, so that your allies oh. have, have a whole round to try and save you before you have to make death saves. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we will, Doctor's Visitation, All right. uh, move, target, treat wounds. Oh, shoot. I should have used his uh, door reaction. Since he pushed you through the door of life and death, he should have slammed the door shut. <laughs> uh, <when> he... <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. So as you run up, you... Oh! You re -rolled? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yep, we're here. Pointing the success. Out. There you go. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, and did it? Did it roll the? No, it, it did not the, roll the, the, the heal. Heel. That's, That's weird. A... Okay. It's, and now I don't even remember. What it's supposed to be. I did the expert, so it's two uh, D eight plus fifteen. Is that right? That sounds good to me. I believe so. Yeah. Two D eight. There's. 2d8 and add 15 to that, so that's 27. Cool. Thank you. I had such a cool turn uh, planned. Let's see. Inc all right. If you're an expert, you increase it by 10, unless you have some other feet. That oh, would okay, no. Okay. It's just 10. So right, 22, so 22. 27, sorry. All right. All right. Anything all right. else from Katrin? I... Seeing that these guys have weakness to electricity, I am going mm -hmm. to shoot this one. No, he already has some persistent electricity damage. I'm going to shoot this one with my shield pistol with electricity oh, okay. ammunition. Holy shit! Okay. All right. All right. I was not, I'll be honest. I was not expecting that. Okay. Okay. This, this was my level three purchases. I haven't used right. it yet. Okay. Uh... That's going to hit. Okay. Elemental ammunition. Hell yeah. Okay, okay. It It's fine. It's electrical, right? Where's it the electric does, part? Hang on. Yeah, let me, let me read this thing in my thing real quick. Hang on. No worries. It is, it is, it is elemental ammunition. Uh, atomizes on impact, dealing one persistent, untyped, acetyl electricity fire, and one splash damage, in addition oh, to the damage it normally gives. Okay, so it's two will... regular damage, then one persistent electricity. Alright, so the bullet hits the creature and shatters. It takes no damage, because it's got resistance 5 to physical. But, as it shatters, you see sparks start to like uh appear and then like a little web of like electricity spreads across the creature's torso and i will apply that persistent damage but also one splash yeah oh and one splash uh very nice yeah, so that would actually be six that would be, yeah that'd be six damage very cool uh all right so i'll do six damage to him 
Very nice. Very cool. All right. Anything else from Kesha? That's, then, a, that's good. Yeah, my very last action, I will raise my shield again. Okay. Well, actually, I think you would be out of actions because it was one to move, one to... Oh, no, no, because you could no, move as part yeah, of... Yeah, you could move as part yeah, of... Yeah, I don't yeah. So, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Ugh. As you guys get as you guys get higher and higher in level, that three action economy actually starts to feel like really good because you start having abilities that do like two things at once. Yeah. So suddenly it's not really three actions anymore. It's like a lot of things that you're doing. It's it's really cool. Um, all right, play comes back around to Bella. Yeah, tell me about that three action economy when I get to level six. <laughs> um, all right, so from here I, is within range of me. Um, if I throw back past Vulture, I'm probably going to get some cover, unfortunately. But I'm going to start by devising stratagem. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I can probably work okay. with that. And then I, so I will then apply. Hmm. I'm going to move. Uh, over here with one stride so I don't have cover because I'm not sure that with cover mm -hmm, it's going to mm -hmm. work. And then from here I will apply a 23 to hit that. So I'll just roll. 23 is definitely going to hit. So just yeah. roll and you'll be able to deal damage. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. So for, right. for those who are wondering if this is like um, the Diviner feature from 5e, sort of. They choose a target, they roll the the die and then they have to use that die this round on that target mm -hmm. um so if they roll like real shitty they might be like you know what i'm not gonna attack you and then they can right. tar target someone else instead and they would just do a normal roll so it's it's kind of cool because it gives you like a chance to sort of figure out how you would hit or not you still just waste the action economy either way but at least yeah. i can then like pivot and be like well i'm gonna do recall knowledge or something mm -hmm. all right so uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, I, yeah that's a lot of damage all right. Yep. And Ten then... plus his vulnerability, and he's too far away to splash. So that okay. is my entire turn. Takes that fat fifteen, um, and then as your turn ends, Clockwork Spy continues to escape. So I'm just going to remove it from combat. Uh, Dom said that that it shouldn't it's be gashed on. It should be it, it should be wash on. Uh, so we'll be will be wash on's turn. So uh, wash on, yeah is going to look at these dudes. He doesn't have electric bombs. That would have been cool to have, electric bombs. That would have made a lot of sense. Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. He definitely wants to participate, though. So, but he doesn't want to get into melee. All right. Uh, focus fire. This one would no longer be dazzled, right? Because we've already passed where Stack's turn would have been, and it was only dazzled for one round. Uh, you know what? So he will actually target this one. And here we go. Uh, 25 is going to hit. Uh, the creature's going to take... Alright, it's three whole damage. Uh... And I've been forgetting, but when these things go off, I'm supposed to be leaving a template behind. Um, let's see. It leaves a 10-foot radius burst that lasts for one minute, and creatures have concealment um, within, and all other creatures are concealed to them. So, 10-foot... Oh my god, that's big. All right. And then he's going to go here and um, that seems like a good turn. All right. Uh, as, as a note, independent should be flat footed uh, because my attack missed. It didn't apply the effect. Oh, oh, like, oh OK. Yeah. Got, got it. Got it. Got it. Bloop. All right. And then, well, if independence flat footed, sure, he'll uh, no, he'll hold off. He'll hold off. All right. Uh, discretion, you're up. No, only has, he only has so many bombs, so... I can relate. Yeah. Two of them, they would have been lined up, but my breath hasn't come back. <laughs> That's all good. Um, <laughs> Is there a feat that you can just, like, no, I do have my breath weapon back? Um... There is not. Oh, well, maybe uh, there's, there's, there's. This is Battle Zoo. There's like mm -hmm. 800 feet. <laughs> I can't answer that question. 
Fair, fair. They go a bit overboard. Right, I'm going to go here. There's one action to get here, because I have panache. And let's just do a bit of... I'll do a, I'll do a trip, and I'll teach them. I don't think they would have flat footed, so why bother? They would bother them. Yeah, 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 okay. Internal monologue that is actually external, has finished. Go trip. Success. Very nice. Uh, they go and they fall to the ground uh, as they play their fall animation. Uh, dot exe. Okay, and I keep my just kidding. Time. They didn't have time to install it. They go into a T pose. Um, I will. I'll just do a, a, a tail swipe. No, no, do. All right. But I, I will. I will give them the prone uh, status though. All right. Okay, claw has has agile, so that's better. So, but it still misses. That's three actions. All right. Um, Vulture to you. Even Baldur's Gate three struggled with prone. Yeah. Yeah. People stand up and then they lay back down. All right. So I guess I guess this would have been an icy wonderland in here, but you know that's fine. We'll we'll have it play out. So what are you gonna do? Uh, I have my gun, so I cast you. You cast shoot. Uh, uh, and you overcome your uh, your sensor issues. For that. Uh, but um, that looks like it. It looks like it missed with eighteen. Yes, it did miss with eighteen, even though they were off guard. All right. Matt, All right. Uh. Let's see. Oh, okay. All right. So what else you got? All right. Then I'm going to run over this way while doing like, reload. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, and then I'll take a second shot at the first one. Okay. Oh, very nice. <laughs> uh, an overcoat. I, <laughs> sorry, it seems very like nice because I, I, I just see success and then it's like, oh, never mind. All right. Yeah. All okay. right. That's what it is. That's the reaction. Okay. Uh, Clockwork Door Warden is going to leave the frost. It hears combat happening over here and gunshots. It seems like the right place to go. So it is going to move until it is out of the concealment. Uh, it sees this dwarf. It will finish its movement right here. And it will try to punch ya. There we go. No. Alright, that's gonna be a hit for. Mm, not getting that. 18 oh. points of damage. And you're still going, so it will do a, it'll do a map with its other hand. Yeah, I wanted the opposite. Ooh. Oh no! Alright. Uh, you, with a crunch, uh, you hear discretion, uh, drop. Uh, or you see, depending on where you're standing. Put me at dying three instead of two. That's just bad. Alright, stack to you. <clears throat> There's a lot happening. Alright, uh... These guys are like the fucking Terminator. It's like T-800 right here. Hey, so they just do 24 damage? Like, is that just what the, how much damage well, that was? Well, that was, that, was that was a critical hit. So it does like 12 damage and then... It's 18 with the best hit. Oh, okay. I just can't see the roll, so I was wondering how much, like, what the damage was. Okay. But... Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I get it. Uh, it's... Uh, Dice so nice is fucking you over like it did me. Oh. It's doing that to me personally? So I have to reset uh, my dice to nice? Not so you, on? no, it's on his end. If you, it's like, I'll sort it out. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. That's yeah, fine. we can sort it out post-session, that's fine. Alright. Alright, move here. Let's see. Alright. Dagger, 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 where is it? Okay, no, it's not drawn. Draw my dagger. Okay. Uh, one Pac-Man, two Pac-Man, and then. Uh, wait, it's two Pac-Man to do this? 
Well, you drew, you drew a dagger. That's one Pac-Man, and you moved. Oh, 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 oh! Right, right, right. Okay. And then I will strike with it. Okay. Uh, 24 is going to hit. All right. Damage. This should have my Arcane Cascade damage built in. Ooh, nice. So you turned your regular attack into a lightning attack because lightning was the last damage of the spell? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. All right, yeah. It takes, uh, takes the damage. All right, and that is my turn. All right, as your turn ends, uh, let's see. This one that you just hit is going to turn and face you, mm -hmm. uh, and it's just going to start smashing. It doesn't have a lot of uh, programming, so smashes it. Oh, my God. Oh, all geez. right. That's all you okay, I'm going to do my champion's reaction. Hang oh, on. okay. Um... There you go. I can't actually hit it, but I can protect you. Okay, so champion's resistance. Uh, two plus your level, so you reduce damage by six. Yeah, six. Alright, All right. I'm at I one. Got you okay. Ow. He's just rocked again, like with a giant haymaker. And... Alright, um, and then it's going to try and shove you back. So your fort is a 20, and it's going to be rolling with a plus 12, or no, a plus 10, sorry. So here we go. 50% chance of pushing you back. Uh, it does not succeed, and then with its last action, it will try to smash you again. Uh, here we go. Be gentle. <laughs> it's, it's all in our Jesus' hands now. Hey, your prayers were answered. Um, Ketrin, to you. But do I uh, lose off guard now, or? Which takes ongoing persistent electrical damage. Here we go. Uh, yeah, you should lose off guard now. Yep. Okay. I am going to doctor's visitation on discretion. And a lot of mileage out of that early on. Uh, Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Alright. Catherine just has a sweat band on. She's <laughs> <laughs> <Still, laughs> running. Just running around the battlefield. When when everything you bought for the level up gets to come into play in one fight. Like the the shield gun, the elemental ammo, the running faster, the running faster to heal. It's all just happening. All right, okay. so you're here for 20. And then um, I, for next action, I can battle medicine somebody who is immune once per day. So, Stack, here's your battle medicine. Thank you. Character is amazing. Truly the best oh, of Oh, baby. Us. Truly. There you go. All right. And then... I am going to look this guy in the face like, look at me. <laughs> I am the problem. Okay. And I'm going to raise my shield. All right. It, it sees you. It knows you. It knows you're the problem. <laughs> it, in its mind's eye, it pictures your shield as a door. A door. <laughs> it better close. <laughs> All right, Bellinor, it's you. Okay. Um, I, I begin my turn. Bye. Devising stratagem. <laughs> You're gonna notice a pattern here. Okay, um, I'm going to hero point that. Oh, okay. I, I can't hero point it. I don't think it's not letting me. At least uh, it might be a fortune. Yeah, it's a fortune effect. You're huh. you're, man you're manipulating dice, which is a fortune effect. Yeah, it's yeah. effective. Yeah, anyway. that's yeah. fair. That's fair. Okay, so I can't hit this turn. So there's two targets. I... You can just shoot the other one. Yeah, it, it, that that roll is only for the person or the creature that you devise stratagem against. Oh, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then I'm going to switch targets over to the one up top, and, and then, then I'm going... A, and then you make a normal attack, yep. Yeah, cool. 
And it's not penalized or anything. And so. I'm out of lightning, so here comes a fire flask. The thunder. Oh, okay, fire. All right, got it. Well, actually, if it's not too to late. Finish each other's sandwiches there. But. Yeah, let's. Uh, let's. I, I like your idea. If I'm gonna <laughs> instead, because I forgot that the thunderstones have a ten foot splash radius. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Held, and then I gotta switch this one back to worn. And then I come back here. There, it's in my actions now. Ah, sorry, I'm sorry. It's it's being difficult. It, I just put it in my hand. It's in my hand. It's telling I've, me. I've heard from both the alchemists that it is a lot of clicking to get alchemists to to do stuff every turn. It's do like, anything. It, it's like a little um, miniature mini. Game I'm gonna roll a d20 to... if that's okay with you, because sure. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my patience with it. Okay, it's a 12 plus 11 is 20. That's gonna hit. How do I represent damage? I'm going to get another... No, that won't work. Oh, my God. Well, go to your items and click the rune so we can see what it does at least. Click the what? Are you talking about the... Th Sorry, not the rune, the stone. Bomb? Yeah. Mm, that, well, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> You're pursuing a lead now? No. Okay, um... here we go. So, um... Thunderstone deals the listed sonic damage and sonic splash damage to each creature. Um, so it's 2d4... Um, uh, and then two splash damage. Okay, so give me two d four. All right, so they're gonna take four. Uh, it's sonic actually damage. four four oh. splash damage because of my calculated splash uh, feet. Oh, very nice. Okay, and then you're only having it affect these two. Yep. And then so they both have to make fort saves. He yells to their team, duck. All right, here's the first fort save for the top one. I'm just gonna use the same guy to roll for the bottom one. All right, well, they get a 32 and a 31, so I think that they are okay. I mean, it's uh, just get... deafened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Anything and else from Bella? Second turn, so I'm just going to stride backwards and okay. get some distance. And that's my turn. All right. Play passes to Vashon. Uh, he's, he's, he's feeling terrible. He didn't bring lightning bombs. He brought Frost, uh, Dread, and Blight. Um, what the heck is a dread bomb? It causes psychic damage and fear. So, um, all right, he'll throw. I guess he'll throw his last ice bomb. Um, here we go. Uh, this one's still prone. It fought while it was prone. Dummy Baka. Oh well. All right. So, yeah, I couldn't tell because it didn't have a an animation for the um. Prone. Anyways. Yeah, T posing. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. Do that again, yeah. Vashan. That looked cool. Uh, so six damage uh, to this one, and then, uh, how big is the splash on this? Ten foot radius burst. Uh, I don't know if this one. Let's see. Yeah, four. Uh. Fourth flash damage. There we go. And then another uh, concealing sphere of stuff appears. There we go. Sweet. And uh, that was one action. He doesn't does not want to get close to these guys, and he doesn't have any more ice bombs. So he's going to, uh, he's going to jump down here and start looking around for clues. I motion him to come over to me. He can share my bombs. Oh, okay. And then he will take a second stride to get next to you. All right, Vulture, to you. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go regular. This thing is already concealed from me. And that doesn't stack, does it? I don't believe there can be... You don't have to make multiple concealed rolls, question mark? I'm just going to roll the thing and see what happens. Okay, mm. success on the concealed, and 21 to hit it. Looks like a hit. Alright, uh, give me the damage. Which I think is 
Alright, it is reduced. It's chipping away at it. Alright, and then I'll spend my last um, action to run and reload. I saw that that thing went down wherever this was. I'm assuming that yep, I don't yep. have any type of eyes on it. It's just gone, gone. You, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's at 150 feet of flight at this point, so it, it could be anywhere. Alright. Just in <clears> case <throat> it comes back, I'm gonna keep eyes that way. That's it. So, sounds good. Discretion, you're up. Okay. I shall no longer be prone. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will... I will claw... Well, I, I'll use my teeth, that'd be fun. I'll do a jaw attack with my bite on the one that's prone. And yank its mechanical guts out. Well, I'm falling so well today. And then I shall no longer be here. I think that's good. Um, yeah, that's a really good jump. idea. Uh, I don't think I can jump with a long jump high enough to get up here. It's, uh, it's only uh, it's only five feet up. Hmm. I don't really understand horizontal jumps and stuff. Um. Oh, I'll try anyway. I'll just jump yeah. over there. Because right. I have a new jump thing. Nice. So, the way jumping now works, let's go to our target. Is that you don't have to set a DC in advance. There's leap gone. I guess it's long jump now. Yeah. Jump long. Go long jump. Oh, okay. So. I can jump 31 feet, I only have 30, oh wait, I have 35 speed, so I can jump 30 feet with my leap. I also right. have the ability to jump without doing a running start. Alright, sounds good. Um, raise your elevation to 5 and you should be able to go over the wall that's there. Okay. And I'll just send myself over here. Nice. Alright. That's the action. You leap out of the cloud of frost, uh, trailing behind you, and then you land uh, on the loading bay. You guys could have seen my wings there, it would have been like gliding and soaring, but you can't because I'm falling. Oh. Oh. Alright. This robot, it, it heard somebody leave the cloud. It is going to... Um, would it pursue? Or is Ketrin just yelling constantly and banging her shield? Hmm... I think it, you know what? Sure. You're making a lot of noise. It'll come up to you and attack. Um, you have the concealed status because you're in this cloud. Uh, it is going to... Dang, that concealed status is going hard. Okay. Um, so it's going to do a step. And then it will... Try to make a fist attack. But it misses. Mm, Alright. And then it will try to do one more. And it misses. All right. Hell yeah. Uh, Stack, to you. All right. <clears throat> Stack will attempt to make a... All right. This guy is past bloody. They're both past bloody. Okay. I will do a spell strike. Okay. Will... Keep in mind that everyone in there is concealed and everything outside of it is concealed from you because of the... Oh. The frosty stuff in the air, yeah. Hmm. It just Maybe means I'll... there'll be a flat check uh, chance that you fail. Which will be included in your roll when you go to do it. Okay. And what's the DC of it again? It's a flat five, so oh. if you roll a four or less, I think. Okay. So it's 20% 20, okay. 20 chance to miss. I like those odds. Okay. Uh, all right, D20. All right, no wild surge, and then? Excellent. Uh, I go to cast the spell. Uh, is it this one? Touch, yeah. Would I know if these things are immune to this? Constructs. The constructs, yeah. The con 
Um, by now you you should probably know that yeah they're not going to be affected yeah. by sickened. Okay. All right, let me delete that. Disease. Yeah. For the most part, clockworks are immune to. Get ready. Bleed, death, effects, disease, doomed, drained, fatigued, healing, mental, non-lethal attacks, paralyzed, poison, sickened, spirit, unconscious. Okay. Yeah. Can I make a... I didn't know if this is in the rules. Can I make a range attack through people? Like, as in, can I range attack this thing without... Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me make sure, let me make sure of that. All right. I'll be next stream. I was okay. gonna do two. Where is Force Fang? There it is. Cast Force Fang. Dagger one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's gonna hit. Give me the All damage. Right. All right. Damage from Force Fang. Damage from Dagger. Alright, so that's uh eight plus one, three. Alright. So it takes the damage from the dagger, and then it takes the damage from the force fang. Yeah. It is past bloodied, but still going. These All indomitable right. uh, clockwork defenders. Okay, then map attack. Alright. Unfortunately, um, e either from the cold air or um, their armor, you miss. Alright. And no. then I guess map three. I don't know really... Would casting the spell into your... Oh, oh no, right, yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that passes to Independent. Independent will spend one Pac-Man to stand up. Um, and it is going to... It just got attacked by something here in the mist. This must be the mean lady that was yelling at it. So it's going to attack. Here we go. Uh, one attack. Uh, that is going to hit... Back, here is some damage. 17. I will uh, do my champion's reaction again. To reduce it by uh, 6. And I am within range of it now, so I will attack it. Hell yeah. Alright, do it. So I'll take a little while. Alright, Oh! oh, oh! Okay, alright. Uh, I didn't know which one the 20 was for, but yeah, yeah, yeah you got it. Yeah, alright, give me some damage. Nice. Ooh, okay. Uh, as you damage it, it is on its last legs. Out in the street, you hear the ding-ding of Dom's bicycle uh, bell as he rides by and tells you it's on its last legs. Um, and then the creature whirls on you since you damaged it with its map attack. Uh, striking for minimum damage, which is 11. Okay. Uh, all right. And then as its turn ends, it will take more of that electrical bullet damage, which will kill it. Yay. Nice. Nice. All right. Uh, and then well, that's, that's very good. <laughs> that takes us to Ketrin. Okay. Well, I'm going to start. Bonking the one in front of me. All right. Uh, bonk number one. Critical hit. Nice. G give me some damage. Ooh, uh, twenty-two man. points of damage. Very nice. Very nice. All right. It is near death. Okay, I'm gonna bonk it one more time. All right. That's gonna hit. Let's see the damage. Nice. Okay, is it gonna be enough? We'll see. Oh, it is near death. Almost left. Almost, almost, almost left. Dare right. I risk it? Dare I risk it? I could bonk it one more time. Or you could raise shield. But you have or so many allies shield. that are coming up before your turn. I mean, that's true. All right, we'll try it. We'll All try right, it. it's probably not gonna work, but we'll try. It's a, it's a hail mary in the concealment. 
No. Nope, that is going to miss. All right. Nope. Okay. And as that round ends, so too will our session. Oh, man. Those guys look like Terminators. Um, okay. Yeah, hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we'll continue in two weeks. Uh, the... This fight, the exploration of the uh, an investigation of this warehouse, trying to figure out uh, Costa Juana's um, whereabouts, motivations, what the hell is going on. There could be uh, a timer that has started because of these uh, these scouts that were left behind. Um, so don't want to don't want to tarry too much, but uh, good start to book two. Good start to book two. It's very fun to see these stronger abilities coming online, and I'm telling you from experience, and, and others can attest, like, they get crazier and crazier as you continue to play, like, the stuff that you're able to do, um, and the numbers get bigger and bigger, so if monkey brain like big numbers, uh, they, they get bigger and bigger and bigger, so, all right, I will take us back to the dashboard. Vulture, since I recouped that gold from my uh, rune that I can't use, I'll pay you back for stew. So you can reclaim your 20, 20 gold. Oh. Alright. All right. So, um... That was, that was the game. Um, tomorrow, normal games. Uh, normal games, normal games. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning. I will not be uh, in town. I will not be uh, running games. I'm going to be at MAGFest. If you are also going to be at MAGFest, uh, look us up. Me and Caden X are going to be there. Uh, Conti's going to be there. Um, I don't think anybody else from the server is going to be there. But it's Is RTK a... coming? Uh, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, has a, he has a baby at home. Oh. And, you know, like, oh. yeah, MAGFest is for the row it's for rowdy people. You got to, you got to, he's, he's not ready for that. So anyways. I'm a little nervous about it. It seems like kind of a rowdy, rowdy convention, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I already signed up for a panel. It's called How to Make Friends. So I'm pretty excited <laughs> about it. Um, who knows? I might uh, might finally fi figure that great mystery out. Um, anyways, uh, does anyone else have any announcements before we adjourn? No? All right, all right. Um, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their weekend, has a good week, and we will continue in two weeks. Thanks for having me. Mm hmm Feels good to be back. Yeah. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Catch you next time.